First appearing in 2004's Godzilla Final Wars, Monster X was the most powerful of the Zillion's Legion of Monsters. Godzilla's final opponent in the Millennium series, he was also the last on-screen foe for a period of 10 years and the final brand new Toho Kaiju until the Servo in 2017. Unlike most of the Zillion's other mind-controlled monsters, Monster X displays true malice in his battle with Godzilla fighting viciously and relentlessly even after the Zillion's ship is destroyed and any potential mind control over him is severed. After transmogrifying into Kaiser Ghidorah, he blasts and beats Godzilla mercilessly across Tokyo. According to the Godzilla Final Wars theater program, Kaiser Ghidorah is canonically the strongest member of the Ghidorah group and is often referred to as being one of the strongest monsters in the Godzilla franchise. Monster X's name, though generic and used for other monsters previously, is possibly a reference to Monster Zero, an alias for King Ghidorah, with the X in his name derived from the Zillion's Japanese name, X-Aliens. Meanwhile, Kaiser Ghidorah's name comes from the German word Kaiser, meaning Emperor, and Ghidorah. This name was chosen to position Kaiser Ghidorah above King Ghidorah, Emperor above King. Both Monster X and Kaiser Ghidorah were designed by illustrator Katsuya Terada, who did character designs for projects such as The Legend of Zelda. Monster X is a bipedal creature with a bone-like black and white exoskeleton, an intentional design choice meant to give the impression of Kaiser Ghidorah's bones. Strength and Durability Monster X is a physical match for Godzilla with his rapid melee attacks and impressive agility, and is the only monster Godzilla fought in Final Wars that survived getting blasted by Godzilla's atomic breath at point-blank in the face, actually appearing to shrug the attack off, as well as being the only one to bring Godzilla to his knees and make him roar out in pain. Kaiser Ghidorah trades Monster X's agility and exoskeleton for an exorbitant amount of power, being the strongest member of the Ghidorah group. He is able to send Godzilla flying with a mere kick, clobber Godzilla with super weight body presses, and easily lift him with his neck strength, exceeding Godzilla's power in all aspects except for durability, which while it is said to be weaker than Monster X's, he is still unfazed by any of Godzilla's attacks until the King of the Monsters is revitalized by Ozaki's energy. Destroyed Thunder Monster X can fire yellow gravitational beams in rapid bursts from his eyes. The destroyed thunder gravitational beams appear to be roughly equal in strength to Godzilla's atomic breath and are able to visibly injure Godzilla. Destroyed Kaiser Kaiser Ghidorah possesses a more powerful anti-gravity variant of Monster X's destroyed thunder, spit in continuous streams from all three of his mouths. The destroyed Kaiser anti-gravity beams are seemingly stronger than Godzilla's atomic breath and can be sustained for long periods of time. Kaiser Ghidorah can also guide their paths and pick up and throw objects with them in a telekinetic fashion, being able to lift the 55,000 metric ton Godzilla with ease. Kaiser Ghidorah demonstrates the ability to directly siphon energy from Godzilla by biting down on him. His necks glow as the energy passes through them, in the case of Godzilla, the energy is a cyan color. However, Godzilla was able to break free after using the Kaiser's energy from Ozaki to overload Kaiser Ghidorah's absorption light. Monster X is capable of levitating for a short period of time, while Kaiser Ghidorah is capable of full-on flight. Although this is never shown in the film and is only demonstrated in the IDW publishing Godzilla, Kaiser Ghidorah becomes disoriented after losing his middle head and easily defeated by Godzilla after this point. It is vulnerable to his own destroyed Kaiser anti-gravity beams and is tricked by Godzilla into severing his right head using these beams. While in Godzilla ongoing, it bites off its left head. Kaiser Ghidorah is also severely outmatched after Godzilla is empowered with Ozaki's Kaiser energy. Toho intended to keep Monster X's transformation into Kaiser Ghidorah a secret prior to the release of Godzilla Final Wars, copywriting the latter as Monster X2. However, the fan site Henshin Online leaked Kaiser Ghidorah's role on July 6th of 2004. Kaiser Ghidorah drew inspiration from several other kaiju. Most overtly, his design and his anti-gravity beams are based on King Ghidorah, though their telekinetic properties are reminiscent of Space Godzilla's Gravity Tornado. Also, the Demon Beast's energy siphoning ability is directly inspired by Iris from Gamera 3. Finally, Kaiser Ghidorah was portrayed by both Monster X actor Motokuni Nakagawa and Toshihiro Ogura through what is referred to as the Dodongo system, named after the quadruped Ultra Kaiju, with one actor in each pair of legs. Monster X appears in the 2011-2013 to IDW publishing comic Godzilla alongside Space Godzilla, Gigan, and Hedorah.
He first appears in issue 8 where he attacks New York before fighting Mothra. After his fight, he manages to dispatch her before Boxer, his son Harrison, and Asuka Hikari arrive in Kiryu along with Kumanga. After dispatching Kumanga, Monster X engages in a brief fight with Kiryu before Space Godzilla and Godzilla show up. In the battle that follows, Monster X transmogrifies into Kaiser Ghidorah, where he starts to gain the upper hand over the King of the Monsters, however Rodan soon arrives to assist Godzilla, managing to decapitate one of Kaiser Ghidorah's heads. Eventually, with Rodan's help, Godzilla is able to overcome and kill Kaiser Ghidorah. And that is all there is to know about Monster X. Hedora is an alien life form that feeds off pollution which first appeared in director Yoshimitsu Bano's Godzilla vs. Hedora. Primarily driven by instinct and a will to survive, the horrific death and destruction Hedora causes are mostly derived from his bizarre biological properties, rather than any true malice. However, he does demonstrate aggression and an ever-increasing amount of intelligence and awareness in his encounters with Godzilla. When first confronted by Godzilla, Hedera answers Godzilla's taunts, and during the final battle, Hedera laughs while brutally maiming Godzilla, and when he attempts to drown him in sludge. In addition, Hedera is one of Godzilla's most difficult opponents in the Showa series. While he could not kill Godzilla, Hedera seriously injured him and cost him a hand and one of his eyes, and it required the combined efforts of Godzilla and humanity to finally defeat the monster. The original Hedera has five distinct forms, denoted as Young Form, Aquatic Stage, Landing Stage, Flying Stage, and Perfect Stage. Hedera's stages all share multiple common characteristics. All have gray, kelp-like surfaces and large golden black irises with red scara. These eyes are positioned so that they blink sideways. Hedera's young form is directly based off tadpoles in design and bears little resemblance to the other forms. In its aquatic stage, it becomes more distinct in its appearance the larger it becomes, though it still vaguely resembles a gigantic tadpole. In its landing stage, it takes on a quadrupedal reptilian form. Its flying stage is like a flying saucer, and its perfect stage takes on a humanoid bipedal shape. The Hedera from Godzilla Final Wars has only one known form, reminiscent of the original Hedera's perfect stage. It has a dark gray body with reddish tubes protruding from it. Considerably thinner than the original Hedera, it has more discernible legs and fewer kelp-like protrusions on its body. Hedera's left arm also possesses a long whip-like extension. According to an interview with Yoshimitsu Bano by the Japanese magazine Ega Haiho, he's directly quoted saying, Hedera's eyes were modeled on female genitalia. Well, come on, vaginas are scary. In Godzilla Final Wars, this illusion was significantly toned down, and Hedera's eyes were tilted, and thus appearing to have a more normal appearance. In Godzilla vs. Hedera, Godzilla tears out two white orbs from Hedera's body. While in the film, the purpose of these orbs are never discussed. Supplementary material explains them to be Hedera's eyeballs, despite them being white instead of red. In Godzilla vs. Hedera, Hedera was an alien life form from the dark gaseous nebula in the Orion constellation that landed on Earth after traveling on a comet for at least 243 light years. In Godzilla Final Wars, Hedera was one of the many monsters under the control of the Exilians, but his origins were never explained. Hedera can launch pieces of his acidic sludge-like body at his opponents, which will burn or smother them. Hedera can also discharge large quantities of sludge without impacting his size in any way, shown when he attempts to drown Godzilla in a pit by dumping a continuous stream of sludge onto him. Sephiric Mist Hedera does not require oxygen to survive, but rather thrives on inhaling toxic pollutants. The byproduct of Hedera consuming these pollutants is a highly concentrated sulfuric mist, which is capable of corroding any metal and completely disintegrating organic life. In his flying stage, Hedera is also able to fly by propelling himself through the air with this mist, spreading the mist across a large area in the process. Hedera's sulfuric acid mist was able to make Godzilla collapse and gasp for air. In the ending credits of Godzilla Final Wars, Hedera is shown spraying sulfuric mist from tubes on his body. Hedera is not seen using the ability in the film itself. Hedorium Light Beam 
Hedera is flying in perfect stages, can fire a crimson laser beam from their eyes, capable of setting objects on fire and burning Godzilla's flesh. Division and Recombination Hedera is composed of multiple smaller individual creatures having joined together. Hedera can grow in size and power by merging with other Hedera's, or split apart into smaller ones and recombine later. Hedera first demonstrates this ability in his first battle with Godzilla, where a small chunk of his body flies off while Godzilla swings him through the air. This piece begins moving on its own and eventually grows into a landing stage, then combines with a larger flying Hedera as it flies through Tokyo. Hedra also uses this ability to survive during his final battle with Godzilla. When Godzilla uses the giant electrode to dry out Hedra's perfect form into a husk, a smaller flying Hedra breaks free of the husk and attempts to flee. Evolution By feeding on pollutants and combining with other Hedras, Hedra can grow substantially in size and evolve into new, more powerful forms. Hedra started out as a completely aquatic, tadpole-like creature, but developed legs that allowed him to come on land and gain access to more pollutants. Hedra's next evolution granted him the ability to fly through the air and cover large distances quickly. The creature's final, perfect stage was a giant bipedal form that towered over Godzilla and allowed him to stand up to Godzilla in a hand-to-hand -hand fight. Hedra has the ability to switch between these forms at will. His perfect stage can transform to his flying stage and back. After a large portion of his body was dried out by the giant Electro, the smaller flying Hedra that emerged from the monster's perfect stage was still able to transform into the landing stage. Durability As a result of his acidic and amorphous body, Hedra has extremely strong defenses. Conventional weapons are useless against him as they simply pass through him, leaving Hedra unharmed. Godzilla's atomic breath also failed to work on Hedra before the giant electrodes were switched on, as his beam was incapable of drying Hedra out and only caused him to spark. Attacking Hedra physically is a poor choice as well, as any contact with Hedra's extremely corrosive blood results in horrific injuries, such as Godzilla's hand being burned down to the bone. Only Hedra's eyes are known to be affected by his own blood, and it had to close its eye whenever it bleeds to prevent the eye from being damaged. While Hedera is vulnerable to being dried out, he can survive this if any moist parts of his body are left behind. Godzilla was forced to tear Hedera apart and expose every square inch of his body to the electric current of the giant electrodes in order to successfully destroy him. Weaknesses Because Hedera's body is composed of moist, sludge-like substance, he is vulnerable to being dried out by strong electrical currents. Hedera was finally destroyed by the electrical currents of the giant electrodes constructed by the JSDF, with Godzilla ensuring his demise by tearing him apart and exposing every part of him to the current. After being dried by the electricity, Hedera crumbled into dust. During pre-production, Hedera was originally called Hedoron. Toho would later use the Hedoron name for a monster from their TV series, Warrior of Love, Rainbow Man. On that note, Hedera's name comes from the Japanese word for mud, Hedoro, and the common kaiju suffix of ra. Godzilla Final Wars director Ryuhei Kitumura originally wanted Hedera to attack the Japanese island of Odaiba in a scene that was meant to spoof the Japanese police drama comedy series Bayside Shakedown. However, producer Shogo Toyama shot the idea down. To somewhat remedy the staff's complaints that Hedera's role was too minuscule, footage of the smog monster destroying Tokyo and using sulfuric acid mist omitted from his tube, which was created alongside publicity shots of Hedera with Godzilla, was placed in the end credits. Yoshimitsu Bano always intended for Hedera to return, as indicated by the and yet another one part at the end of Hedera's debut film. While Bono planned on making Godzilla's Hedera 2, it never got very far into production. Decades later, in the 2000s, Bono tried to make a new Godzilla film titled Godzilla 3D, which would have featured Deathla, a kaiju which would have been similar in appearance to Hedera, but red in color and with a face like a human skull. His endeavors to secure funding for Godzilla 3D would lead to Legendary Pictures acquiring the rights to Godzilla in 2010 and releasing the American film in 2014. Hedera appears in the TV series Godzilla Island, attacking Mothra and later being dried up by Godzilla. More interestingly, however, the series introduced a mushroom-based Hedera named Neo-Hedera, 
who resembled the original's perfect stage, with the exception of being light blue with candy pink patches. Neo Hedra appeared on Matango Island in the year 2098, destroying the food supply of the nearby Godzilla Island by producing giant mushrooms. At first defeating Godzilla, in the end, Neo Hedra met his own doom through the combined efforts of the human Misato and by the monsters King Caesar and Fire Rodan. That's all we have for the Smog Monster. Destroya is a Precambrian crustacean kaiju that debuted in 1995's Godzilla vs. Destroya, the last entry in the Heisei Godzilla series. Standing 120 meters tall in his perfect form and weighing in at 80,000 metric tons, Destroya is often considered one of Godzilla's most merciless, intelligent, and evil foes, along with the Showa King Ghidorah and Space Godzilla. Unlike monsters that kill or destroy unintentionally and act only out of instinct or while under mind control, Destoria seems fully aware of the death and destruction he causes, and takes pleasure in causing it. Destoria's strategies seem to revolve around causing as much pain to his opponents as possible, as his aggregate form is shown repeatedly stabbing Godzilla Jr. with his limbs and administering extremely painful doses of micro-oxygen directly into his chest. Destoria takes his name from the oxygen destroyer weapon that spawned him. A possible reason that the name Destroyer isn't commonly used for the monster in various markets is because the word itself cannot be trademarked by Toho. However, he is often referred to as Destroyer in dubbed versions of the film. That's the adult Destroyer! All Destoria is Toho's official name for the character. Also, yeah, it's spelled like that. The monster has six distinct forms, which are denoted as Microform, Crawl Form, Juvenile Form, Aggregate Form, Flying Form, and Perfect Form. While Destoroyah's forms vary drastically in overall appearance, they all have numerous common features. All of Destoroyah's forms have bright red exoskeletons and numerous crest-like protrusions. The micro and crawl forms of Destoroyah resemble the extinct trilobite and modern horseshoe crabs. After combining, the crawl forms of Destoroyah become juvenile forms, six-legged creatures with long necks and extendable jaws. Aggregate forms appear to be much larger versions of the juvenile, but with two additional appendages arising from their backs. Destoroyah's flying form has a set of four wings, a well-developed frill-like crest, and a single reptilian-esque jaw. Des can freely change form between aggregate and flying without having to divide or recombine. Destoroyah's perfect form is the only form of Destoroyah to be bipedal. His chest is dominated by a beige-colored floral pattern, and has numerous red and beige spines on his shoulders, knees, and neck. Division and Recombination Destoroyah's numerous forms all have the ability to combine with one another to create progressively larger forms, reducing in number but increasing in size until eventually becoming one perfect form. If badly injured, Destoroyah's perfect form can split apart into numerous smaller aggregate forms, then recombine to recover and regenerate from injuries sustained. While split apart, Destoroyah is extremely vulnerable, and to defend himself while divided, the aggregates must swarm larger opponents and attempt to suffocate them by exhaling large quantities of micro-oxygen to stand a chance of survival. Micro-Oxygen Beam Destoroyah's juvenile, aggregate, flying, and perfect forms can all fire a concentrated blast of micro-oxygen from their mouths. The juvenile's beam was white in color, while the larger forms version of the attack took the form of a purple helix. This ray's power gradually increases with each new form, with perfect form Destoroyah being able to kill a critically wounded Godzilla Jr. with just one shot. Alongside his micro-oxygen ray, the laser horn is one of Destoroyah's signature attacks and is used exclusively in his perfect form. Destoroyah's horn can temporarily enter an energetic state where it becomes incredibly sharp, being able to cleave straight through objects and other monsters. While Godzilla's regeneration helped him survive, Destoroyah's laser horn was strong enough to slice straight through his body multiple times. Strength and Durability Destoroyah battled Godzilla at the peak of his power, and could survive multiple hits from his red spiral atomic ray, although he was shown vomiting large amounts of blood and losing part of his head crest to the ray. An attack which either instantly killed or crippled most enemies in one shot. As for physical attacks, Destoroyah's forms have spikes, sharp teeth and bones, pincers and claws, and a tail with pincers. The aggregate form is equipped with spiked claws, like a praying mantis, while the perfect form was shown easily carrying Godzilla into the air using only the pincers on his tail. While Destoroyah himself was shown to be vulnerable to extreme temperatures, the fact that Destoroyah was able to fight the overheating Godzilla many times is a testament to his durability. Energy Draining Destoroyah's aggregate form can inject micro-oxygen directly into his opponent's wounds through his jaws. 
This technique drains the victim's energy and is incredibly painful to experience. The Surya's perfect form can drain energy through his tail, an ability he used against Godzilla. According to the book Godzilla vs. Destoroya Super Complete Works and the video game Godzilla Movie Studio Tour, Destoroya can absorb the DNA of his opponents by dissolving their cells with micro-oxygen and obtaining the DNA from them. Destoroya was able to create his perfect form after obtaining DNA from Godzilla Jr.'s body during their battle in Tokyo, generating an endoskeleton that allowed him to stand upright. Weaknesses Destoroya's main weakness is his inability to handle extreme temperatures. His juvenile forms, while near impervious to most of the firearms used by the SWAT team, were easily killed by flamethrowers and AH-64 Apache helicopters. The JSDF's Mazer tanks were very effective at eradicating juvenile forms as well. Also, Destoroya was nearly killed by birding Godzilla following Junior's death and only managed to escape obliteration by splitting into aggregate forms and taking time to regenerate. Once Godzilla's internal temperatures reached critical levels and he began using his infinite heat ray, Destoroya's armored exoskeleton quickly became useless against the beam's constantly increasing power. In addition, the flaps of skin on Destoroya's wings can be damaged by concentrated fire from the freezer units, making him unable to fly. Destoroya exploded upon hitting the ground. Destoroya is easily the oldest monster in the entire Godzilla franchise, its originating Precambrian crustacean colony being 2.5 billion years old, or around the same time that multicellular life arose during the Proterozoic Eon. Of course, in real life, crustaceans only first originated starting 511 million years ago, well into the Cambrian period. While the perfect form of Destoroya is regarded as his final form, the Godzilla vs. Destoroya theater program apparently states that there is no guarantee that Destoroya's evolution ended with that form. Now, this doesn't mean that a sequel to the movie was planned or anything, but it's still an interesting bit nonetheless. When Toho was planning the final film of the Heisei series, it initially considered having Godzilla's final enemy be the restless spirit of the original 1954 Godzilla, under the name Ghost Godzilla. According to Takao Okawara, this idea was discarded because Godzilla's last two enemies, Mechagodzilla and Space Godzilla, were also doppelgangers of him. The next enemy considered was Baruberoi, a name that applied to both a continuously evolving creature that would have defeated an Anguirus Hound and taken on its form, and almost final destroyer concepts that incorporated the Oxygen Destroyer. However, Toho worried that the name Barubaroi sounded too similar to Berber, a term used to describe an ethnic group from North Africa with apparently derogatory origins, and that it could be considered insensitive. So the name was changed to Destroya. Destroya was originally planned to have another attack, a beam fired from the floral pattern on his chest, simply called the Stomach Beam. While a lot of concept art exists for this attack, it was cut from the final film. Deleted scenes from the film show Destoroya opening his floor pattern and using the beam, which was not yet edited into the scene, instead being shown only by flashes of light and pyrotechnics used on set, which easily knocks Godzilla off his feet. The manga actually shows Destoroya using the stomach beam, where it breaks off one of burning Godzilla's dorsal plates and also severs the tip of his tail. In addition to this, there is also an alternate ending to Godzilla vs. Destoroya. A deleted scene at the end of the film shows that after Destoroya is brought to the ground when trying to escape from Godzilla's meltdown, he rises again as opposed to dissolving. With his wings torn up from the ULT lasers, he can no longer escape Godzilla's fury. Godzilla quickly overpowers Destoroya, grabbing him by his horn and pummeling him repeatedly. As Godzilla melts down, the JSDF rain their ULT weapons upon him, as well as Destoroya. Unable to stand against the immense heat of Godzilla's meltdown and the freezing cold of the ULT lasers, Destoroya falls and evaporates. However, it was thought that having Godzilla fight Destroya while he went through a meltdown took away the focus from Godzilla's death, which was to be the main point of the movie. So the scene was re-edited to have Destroya die after the JSDF shoots him down, and allow Godzilla to have center stage as he finally dies. The manga kept the original ending though. That's all we have for Destroya. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Inconsistent Kaiju Stats the primary focus of this video is exposing the conflicting numbers given for monsters' attributes in official sources, as opposed to on-screen scaling discrepancies, such as Titanosaurus changing into the size of a mountain, or Gigan and Ghidorah suddenly becoming considerably smaller than the Godzilla Tower as they encircle it. Nor are we talking about how in Destroyer Monsters, Gorosaurus is apparently 35 meters even though he's the same size as the 50 meter Godzilla. With that said, let's dive straight into the first creature on our list. Okay, this is pretty much just a joke, but these two books say that the giant lizard's length is unspecified, meanwhile this one says it's one meter. 
Okay, for real now. To make things clear from the get-go, the Varen in the 1958 Varen the Unbelievable and the Varen in the 1968 Destroy All Monsters are separate. They kind of have to be considering the original Varen blatantly dies at the end of the movie. Anyways, the 1958 Varen is without any doubt 50 meters tall and 15,000 metric tons. Got that so far? Well here's where it gets weird. If you look at pretty much any and all Godzilla media that lists monster stats, the Destroy All Monsters Baron will be listed as being 50 meters and 15,000 metric tons. The same as the original Baron. However, books released near the time of Destroy All Monsters, such as this Asahi Sonorama book, as well as this book from 1993, gave the 68 Baron different stats than the original 58 Baron. A 10 meter height and a slightly obese, the encyclopedia's word is not mine, 60 metric ton weight. So what the heck is going on here? First we need to explain Varen's appearance in Destroy All Monsters. Originally, the script called for Varen to participate in the final fight against King Ghidorah. However, the Varen suit was in very bad condition by that point, and only a 90 centimeter prop could be used. To reconcile this, some promo materials explain that the Monsterland Varen was a juvenile. Oh, and this book randomly says that the second Varen is 30 meters tall, while this book says the original Varen weighs 25,000 tons for no reason. While the Showa 1998 and 2001 King Ghidorah stats are reliably unvariable, the Heisei King Ghidorah, not as much. The heights for the Heisei King Ghidorah and Mecha King Ghidorah are listed as either 140 or 150 meters. The majority of sources we have available from 1993 and onward say that the Heisei KG is 140 meters tall and has a wingspan of 150 meters. Though two contemporary books released right after Godzilla vs King Ghidorah we have say that they are 150 meters in height. In addition to another 1995 book and the 1998 The Official Godzilla Compendium, which says that the King Ghidorah's wingspan is 175 meters as well. Which is correct? I would have said 150 height and 175 wingspan if I hadn't found out about the January 1992 Godzilla vs King Ghidorah Battle History manga collection saying that Ghidorah and his cyborg form are 140 meters tall. And to add to the beauty, it turns out, three of the four books that give KG the 150 meter stature also go ahead and give Mecha King Ghidorah a 70,000 metric ton weight, the same weight as the non Mecha Ghidorah. Meanwhile, MKG is overwhelmingly said to weigh 10,000 more tons than his biological form, including in the official Godzilla compendium and the manga collection. So, not even sources released immediately after Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah agree? Although a majority of sources state the Heisei King Ghidorah's height is 140 meters, it turns out that Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, the actual movie itself, shows, albeit briefly, that Mecha King Ghidorah is in fact 150 meters in height. Oh boy, the Showa Mothras. The whole thing is confusing to the point of it being impossible to keep up with unless it's laid out on a chart which I created it right here, and you can check out for yourself in the description. So as you can see, literally none of the Mothra incarnations have any attributes that are kept the exact same from source to source, except for the wingspan of the 1961 Imago, which is said to be 250 meters every single time. Since a lot of the time, the 135 meter wingspan is attributed to the Imago Mothras in the Godzilla films, it seems apparent that Mothra was made to have shrunk in size between the 1961 Mothra and Mothra vs. Godzilla. However, a lack of specificity on this, and a lack of specification on the later Mothra larvae being 53 or 40 meters, created a gigantic mess which spiraled out of control into this. Perhaps the most ridiculous thing in this whole chart is one book stating that the third generation Mothra is, quote, between 40 and 100 meters, whatever that means. You want to know what's utterly hilarious? The Mothra eggs have more reliable stats than any of the Showa Mothras. The 1961 egg is 100 meters in long diameter and weighs 50 metric tons, and the 1964 egg has a 50 meter diameter and 65 metric ton weight. Isn't that just the saddest thing? Thanks to the Mothra vs. Godzilla manga from May 1964, hope is not completely lost. At the beginning, the manga says that Mothra's wingspan is 250 meters, the larva's length is 180 meters, and even mentions the egg being 100 meters long. All stats consistent with the original Mothra film and not Mothra vs. Godzilla. This manga was published within only a month after the film's release, after all, and was definitely in production before that. In other words, these stats were the ones the manga creators were given by Toho as they were the only ones available at the time. 
Whether that means Toho changed them after the manga began production or even months after the movie came out, it's what best lines up with the trends in our chart. That or there is literally no consistency whatsoever and it is 100% impossible to tell the true sizes of the Showa Mothras. <laughs> Baragon is kind of a similar case to Varen, where his size changed between his debut movie and Destroy All Monsters. Again, the Destroy All Monsters Baragon is separate from the 1966 Frankenstein Conquers the World Baragon. The majority of the time, the 68 Baragon is said to be the same height as the 65 Baragon, 25 meters. However, some sources state that the Monsterland Baragon is actually 5 meters shorter, including the same Asahi Sonorama book from 1968 which confirmed that the Monsterland Baron was 10 meters. It seems to have been the intended height for him at the time of the film's release, and was lost to time just like Varen's height. While the original King Kong doesn't actually fit the parameters we set for this video, since his problem is on-screen scaling, he is the most important and arguably the most blatant case of this, so we'll go ahead and talk about him here. To begin with, King Kong creator Marion C. Cooper originally imagined Kong as being quote 40 to 50 feet tall, and this is reflected in promotional materials of the movie, where he's said to be 50 feet. However, stop-motion animator for the film Willis O'Brien and his crew made the sets and models so that Kong was way smaller than his original envisioned height, instead appearing to be 18 feet on Skull Island and 24 feet in New York City. However, Cooper still used camera tricks such as changing the camera angles to make Kong's height adjust to whatever feeling he wanted to convey in each scene. Kong's size ranged from 18 to 60 feet across the stop-motion segments, and Mr. Cooper justified it by saying that he, quote, felt confident that if the scenes moved with excitement and beauty, the audience would accept any height that fitted into the scene. The one essential thing was to make the audience enthralled with the character of Kong, so that they wouldn't notice or care that he was 18 feet high or 40 feet, just as long as he fitted the mystery and excitement of the scenes and action. On top of this, the giant Kong head used in the movie is on scale with a 40-foot Kong, and the giant hand was on the scale of a 70-foot Kong, meaning that across the original film, the giant ape's height fluctuates from smaller than the Peter Jackson Kong to a bit taller than the 1967 King Kong Escapes incarnation, all the while his official given height is 50 feet. Honestly, this isn't that ludicrous when you remember that Gorosaurus is apparently 35 meters tall and King Kong escapes, even though he's the same exact size as the 20 meter King Kong. Or wait. Huh. Anyways, thanks for watching. There are two Godzillas featured in Godzilla, Planet of the Monsters. The 50 meter tall Godzilla Phileas and the over 300 meter tall Godzilla Earth. Godzilla Phileas's name is derived from the Latin word for sun. Meanwhile, Godzilla Earth's name symbolizes his dominion over the planet after 20,000 years. Godzilla Phileas and Godzilla Earth are the first incarnations of the Monster King to appear in an animated film, with Earth also being the largest on-screen incarnation of the character to date. This Godzilla first appeared in the year 2030, at which point mankind had already endured over a quarter of a century of repeated attacks from giant monsters. Godzilla established himself as the most powerful monster, eliminating many of the others and resisting all of mankind's attempts to defeat him, even with the assistance of humanity's alien allies. This Godzilla is described as taking the basic, recognizable silhouette of Godzilla and combining it with the unique traits decided for the character for the anime works. Rather than aiming for something anatomically accurate, this Godzilla is simply meant to be imposing. The anime Godzilla superficially resembles the MonsterVerse Godzilla, with a bulky body and a thick and short neck, but contrast with his crocodile-like head bearing a relatively long snout, large arms and thighs with skinnier lower legs, and sharp and jagged leaf-shaped dorsal plates. Godzilla has rough, bluish-green skin with a texture reminiscent of tree bark across his body. Inspired by Kongori Kishi statues, he has a very robust musculature, with pronounced abdominal and pectoral muscles on his chest. The muscular element to Godzilla's appearance is meant to express its power as well as invoke the hugeness of trees, its status as the apex life form on Earth, and a deity-like presence. His tail has a ridged underside and ends with a pointed spear-like tip. According to the Planet of the Monsters theater program, the monster's deity-like blue eyes are meant to convey intelligence, such as that of a philosopher. 
While Godzilla Earth looks more or less like a larger version of Godzilla Filius after 20,000 years, he also possesses several spikes on the bottom of his chin that resemble a beard. Trees were decided upon as the motif for the anime Godzilla's design, after the key concept for this Godzilla was determined to be that it was the peak of evolution of life on Earth. According to co-director Kobunchi Zuno, there were several reasons for this, including the fact that trees are currently the most widespread, largest organisms on Earth, the fact that they are capable of living for thousands of years, basically only requiring might and water to survive, and that trees' hard and fibrous body tissues protected them while also supporting their enormous mass and volume. Moreover, actual trees possess trace elements in their biology and generate electrons when performing photosynthesis, allowing for a plant-based Godzilla to use powerful electromagnetic waves. Shizuno explained, We expanded from the idea of if a plant had undergone super-evolution due to its cellular structure perhaps containing metallic elements, and its whole body became a power generator as a result. I heard that at the top of the evolution of the Earth are actually plants, and in this planet of the monsters, I thought Godzilla would be like a huge world tree at the center of its unique environment. This incarnation of Godzilla is unique in that he originated from plant life rather than animal life. He is said to be the end result of natural selection on Earth, and has survived for 20,000 years as the largest and most powerful life form in the planet's history. Godzilla evolved as a result of plant life incorporating the characteristics of various other organisms through horizontal gene transfer. The monster was first discovered in 2030 by Kyohei Jamane when he traveled to Oro Island to investigate the carcass of a Kamuebas that had washed ashore. Yamane named the possible predator responsible, Godzilla, after a mythical dragon from the island's folklore. The prequel novel to the anime trilogy, Godzilla Monster Apocalypse, goes much more into detail about both Godzilla's role and the anime movie universe in general. You can learn more about it by watching this video. Meanwhile, Godzilla Filius is a creature spawned by cells that divided from Godzilla Earth, much like the Servum. While the Servum diverged into a new subspecies, Filius is effectively an immature clone of Godzilla Earth. Asymmetrically Permeable Shield Godzilla Earth and Filius can generate a powerful electromagnetic charge through an in vivo amplifier located inside their bodies. This pulse can be used to disable electronics around Godzilla, or to produce a force field which surrounds Godzilla and shields him from any and all damage, including strikes from multiple nuclear warheads. This ability is also possessed by the Servum, as they and Filius are derived from Godzilla Earth. Atomic Breath Godzilla and Phileas can fire a highly accelerated, charged particle beam from their mouths, which have seemingly pinpoint accuracy. Godzilla fires this beam from his shield in front of his mouth. A new ability Godzilla Earth gained as a result of growing over 20,000 years is the Super Oscillatory Wave. This attack is a resonance phenomenon caused by the King of the Monsters roaring at an extremely high volume, and is capable of crushing and destroying targets. Shock Wave Godzilla Earth can generate a powerful shockwave by swinging his tail. This beam is capable of wiping out a large portion of humanity's forces. Metallic Tissue Godzilla's body tissue is integrated with metallic muscle fibers that support his massive weight in the absence of a skeleton, and contribute to his impressive physical durability. Godzilla's cells possess incredible regenerative and reproductive properties, allowing them to give rise to all new species possessing Godzilla's DNA. Repeated propagation of Godzilla cells over a period of 20,000 years created an all-new ecosystem on Earth built around Godzilla. Additionally, Godzilla cells grant him a rapid healing factor that allows his tissue to heal completely in a manner of seconds if damaged. Weaknesses Godzilla Filius' shield is produced by an organ located in his dorsal plates. If the organ is targeted and destroyed at a moment where the shield is not deployed, the shield will be disabled until the organ regenerates. The humans destroyed Godzilla Filius by planting EMP probes into his body while the shield was disabled, which caused electromagnetic energy to build to critical levels inside Godzilla's body until he exploded. Space Godzilla is a crystalline, extraterrestrial Godzilla clone that debuted in Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. One of Godzilla's most intelligent foes in the series, Space Godzilla exhibits displays of planned combat strategy throughout his debut movie. This is further evidenced by the fact that Space Godzilla sought to dominate the Earth of his own free will. Unlike Godzilla, who in the Hazy series of films is depicted as a force of nature, neither good nor evil, Space Godzilla appears to have an element of true malice, as according to Mothra's Cosmos, Space Godzilla intended to kill Godzilla so that the Earth would be defenseless when he dominated it. Space Godzilla has both a 250 meter, 720,000 metric ton flying form, 
and a 120 meter tall, 80,000 metric ton combat form. Before the name Space Godzilla was chosen, the monster was also known as Crystal Godzilla. Also, unlike Mech Godzilla, Space Godzilla's official English name is spelled with camel case. In other words, Space Godzilla is spelled with a capital G, while Mech Godzilla is spelled with a lowercase g. The reason for this inconsistency is unknown. Space Godzilla's name has also been spelled as two words. Space Godzilla obviously looks similar to Godzilla in many ways. Space Godzilla's head is elongated and his mouth area appears similar to Biollante's, as he has sharp teeth and tusks on the sides of his mouth. In Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, the human characters hypothesized that Godzilla cells somehow cast into space, fell into a black hole and began assimilating crystalline organisms, then came out from a white hole, evolving rapidly by absorbing energy from exploding stars. It is not known for certain what caused the Godzilla cells to fall into the black hole, but it is explained in the film that either cells from Godzilla's previous clone, Biollante, who by the way was not erased from history, please watch our Godzilla vs King Ghidorah time travel explained video, escaped Earth's orbit when she rose into space after battling Godzilla in 1990, or that Mothra unknowingly carried the cells into space on her wings when she was going to space to deflect a meteor headed for Earth in 1993. Space Godzilla has a lot of abilities, so we'll try to run through them as quickly as possible. Corona Beam Space Godzilla is able to fire an energy beam from his mouth and shoulder crystals. He appears able to control the direction and movements of these energy beams, allowing them to hit his target in various ways, even bypassing potential defenses. The beam is able to visibly injure Godzilla, even knocking him to the ground in one instance, and later is used to sever one of Magura's arms. Intelligence Space Godzilla demonstrates a high degree of intelligence and strategy. Upon arriving on Earth, Space Godzilla immediately went after Godzilla, as he saw him as the biggest threat within his path to ensure his dominance on the planet, heading straight to Birth Island to attack Little Godzilla so as to draw out Godzilla himself. Gravity Tornado Space Godzilla possesses a form of telekinesis, being able to float or transport other kaiju through the air. Though he cannot move his targets with great speed, Godzilla was completely unable to break free of his psychic grip. Energy Manipulation Space Godzilla is able to manipulate energy at will. In addition to the aforementioned Corona Beam, he is able to conduct energy through touch, allowing him to stand a better chance when facing a foe in close combat. His shoulder crystal's main function is to replenish the space monster's strength by drawing on earthbound cosmic energy and other nearby sources. Space Godzilla can also combine this power with his geokinesis to maximize his energy as well as create structures able to attack his foes. He can also produce an aura that can cause electrical disturbances. Geokinesis Space Godzilla can grow crystals from the ground for offensive or defensive use, as well as provide him with a source of energy. Photon Shield Space Godzilla can generate a crystal-like shield at will to dissipate or even reflect energy beams, although he only used this ability against Godzilla. Homing Ghost Space Godzilla can raise crystals into the air and propel them at an opponent. Their quantity makes them hard to dodge, though they travel at a slow pace. Photon Hurricane While in his flying form, Space Godzilla can emit a ring-shaped electromagnetic wave which disrupts electrical instruments. Physical Strength While much of Space Godzilla's strength is limited due to his size and build, he was able to lift and throw Magara several hundred meters after impaling it with his tail. He was also able to hold his own against Godzilla for a time, while battling him up close. Flight Space Godzilla is capable of flight at Mach 3 in Earth's atmosphere, and can reach speeds nearing the speed of light while traveling through space. In addition to flight, Space Godzilla is also capable of levitation. Weaknesses Space Godzilla is heavily disadvantaged in melee combat due to his heavy build and comparatively short arms. When engaging Magura at close range, Space Godzilla's skin is pierced by the mech's drill nose. Magura's spiral grenade missiles are able to destroy Space Godzilla's shoulder crystals, which drastically weakens his power. Space Godzilla was eventually destroyed by multiple hits from Godzilla's spiral heat beam. Space Godzilla's flying form weighs a massive 720,000 metric tons, making Space Godzilla the heaviest known monster in the entire Godzilla franchise. Biollante and Bagan are close behind, at 200,000 and 280,000 metric tons respectively. 
That, or Space Godzilla's flying form might not even be remotely the heaviest, and might actually be 72,000 metric tons, rather than 720,000. This is because Flying Space Godzilla's weight stat is inconsistent from source to source. The inconsistent stat plague affects many kaiju and their attributes, not just Space Godzilla. An early version of Space Godzilla, called Astro Godzilla according to G-Fan issue 105, would have led an army of giant alien dragonflies that he would have sent to Birth Island to attack Little Godzilla. Godzilla would have teamed up with Magura and Mothra to defeat him. Space Godzilla's design is a modified version of Super Godzilla, the transformation of Godzilla found in the Super Nintendo game of the same name. Minoru Yoshida designed the concepts for both monsters, originally creating Super Godzilla for the game, but later recycling the look and tweaking it into becoming Space Godzilla's final design. A Space Godzilla was the title of an unmade Godzilla film from the 1970s that was considered after Terror of Mechagodzilla, but had been scrapped and instead was turned into an illustrated short story. This bizarre story began with the discovery of a female alien Godzilla named Rosan, who was dying from diabetes while pregnant with her son Lilin. Human scientists converted Roseanne's body into a spaceship, allowing her to carry Lilin to Godzilla Planet, where he fought alongside his father Kunin to battle the evil Sunarian aliens and their leader Gamani. Aside from the title, this project has nothing to do with Space Godzilla. Early versions of the script for Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla called for Space Godzilla to face Godzilla and a second Mechagodzilla. A plan that was scrapped when it was thought that Space Godzilla fighting against the combined might of Godzilla and the machine which nearly killed him the previous year would make the battle too one-sided. Instead, the less powerful Magura was revived and updated for this purpose. Although, Godzilla the Half-Century War seems to pay homage to this idea in issue number 4. Gigan is a cyborg space dinosaur that debuted in Toho's 1972 film Godzilla vs. Gigan. Sometimes considered Godzilla's most brutal and violent opponent, Gigan is shown to be very vicious and sadistic in combat, preferring to shred his opponents up close with his hook hands and buzzsaw. However, at least in the Showa series, Gigan appears to be a bit of a coward, retreating and leaving his ally at the mercy of his enemies as soon as the tide of battle turns against him. In Final Wars, Gigan is shown to be somewhat incompetent, having his head easily blown off by Godzilla's atomic breath and later slicing his own head off with two razor discs intended for Mothra. In his original appearance, Gigan stood 65 meters tall and weighed 25,000 metric tons. The Godzilla Final Wars incarnation of Gigan was 120 meters in height and weighed 60,000 metric tons, with a scythe length of 45 meters. The chainsaw-equipped modified Gigan retains the same stat as his previous form before being upgraded by the Zeolians. Little known fact, there are actually two different Showa Gigan suits. The first one was used in Godzilla vs. Gigan, and the second in Godzilla vs. Megalon and Zone Fighter. The second suit is slightly wider at the shoulders and has a shorter visor and slightly different shaped back fins. Zone Fighter after his defeat at Godzilla and Jet Jaguar's hands, Gigan returned to space and was captured by the Garoga aliens. They repaired and upgraded his cybernetics, which had been heavily damaged in the fight, and he was sent back to Earth to battle Zone Fighter. Unfortunately, Godzilla arrived and aided Zone Fighter in defeating Gigan, who was sent back into battle unrepaired under Garogan control, and he was defeated by Zone Fighter before exploding. Hooked Appendages Gigan's forelimbs sport a pair of large metal hooks in place of hands, which he can use to batter and stab an opponent. In Zone Fighter, the tips of the hooks can release an explosive charge on contact with an enemy. In Godzilla Final Wars, instead of hooks, Gigan's forearms ended in scythe-like blades, the undersides of which were each equipped with dual grappling hooks, which Gigan could use to bind an enemy and then drag them straight into his buzzsaw. Following his initial defeat by the recently awakened Godzilla, the blades were replaced with double-pronged chainsaws. Gigan was also able to use his scorpion-like tail to aid him in melee combat. Anti-Gravity Flight Gigan is capable of flying at speeds of up to Mach 3 while in Earth's atmosphere. However, in space, he is capable of flight at speeds of up to Mach 400 by encasing himself in a diamond. In battle, Gigan will often use flight to engage in aerial slams to continuously topple his opponents without giving them a chance to get up. 
In Zone Fighter, owing to the hasty repair work conducted on his cybernetics by the Garogas, Gigant's deceleration was extremely poor, meaning that he had to be fitted with a set of deployable drogue parachutes to slow his immense flying speed upon approaching a battle. Another mode of movement Gigan utilizes is his teleportation ability, only seen in the video games. Laser Beam In addition to his melee weapons, the Showa-era Gigan was depicted as having a laser beam aperture set into his forehead just above his visor. Official art would frequently depict him as firing a laser from the device, although he was never shown actually doing it in the films. In Godzilla Final Wars, Gigan's laser blast was finally revealed on screen, though it had been heavily altered from the original concept. Rather than being fired from a forehead laser device, it was instead fired from Gigan's eye itself. It also was no longer a traditional laser, but a large energy blast that in a manner similar to a cluster bomb would split into smaller explosive bolts of energy upon entering close range of the target. The eye beam has officially been titled the Cluster Light Beam. A similar attack appears in the Atari Pipeworks trilogy, but the beam scatters the instant it leaves Gigan's eye, has a limited range, and is referred to as the Shotgun Blast. In the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 Godzilla game, modified Gigan's laser beam is called the Giganume Cluster. Buzzsaw Gigan has a durable and extremely sharp buzzsaw built into his abdominal area. In his first appearance, Gigan's saw was able to draw blood from both Godzilla and Anguirus. In Godzilla Final Wars, it was even able to lacerate the hull of the Gotenga. A favored tactic of Gigan is to use his powers of flight along with his buzzsaw in hit-and-run attacks, slashing his opponent as he passes them. In Godzilla Battle Legends and the Godzilla arcade game, Gigan displays the ability to spit fire from his mouth. Despite it never being used in a film, the 1998 computer program Godzilla Movie Studio Tour confirms that Gigan has always had this ability but it just never used it. Razor Discs Modified Gigan displayed the ability to fire guided razor discs from two hidden slots in his upper torso, which were able to boomerang back for a second attempt if they initially missed their target. Doing so, however, is risky, as if they missed the target once again, Gigan would find himself right in the path of his own attack, which ultimately was what led to his death in Godzilla Final Wars. In Bandai Namco's Godzilla, Gigan's razor disc attack is called Blooded Slicer. He also possesses a more powerful version called Surging Wave Blooded Slicer. Although Gigan never used his laser on screen in the Showa series, the attack has been featured in some non-film media. Gigan has used his laser in numerous pieces of official print media since the Showa era, including a Zone Fighter manga and the CinemaShare's Godzilla vs. Megalon comic adaptation. Gigan also demonstrated the ability in several video games including Godzilla Monster of Monsters, Godzilla Battle Legends, and Godzilla Great Monster Battle, as well as the Atari Pipeworks trilogy. In the Ultraman Mebius series, there is a monster called Dinosaur who uses Gigan's roar. Gigan was the first monster to cause Godzilla and Anguirus to visibly bleed. In Godzilla vs. Gigan, he flew over Godzilla and slashed his shoulder with a buzzsaw and later stabbed him in the head with his hammer claw, causing blood to run down his face. Fake Godzilla and Mechagodzilla in Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla would continue this trend. In the television series Godzilla Island, Gigan is shown to have become Godzilla's ally after being defeated and helps to defend Earth against alien threats. In IDW Publishing's main Godzilla comic timeline, Gigan first appears in the 2011 to 2013 series simply titled Godzilla, as one of the alien monsters that attack Earth. After being defeated by Rodan and Anguirus, Gigan re-emerges in Godzilla Rulers of Earth, where he is upgraded by the Cryogs from his Showa design to his Millennium design, and later to modified Gigan by the end of the series. This is the first time Gigan starts out in his Showa design and gets converted to his Millennium designs visibly. Though Gigan's biography from the instruction manual of the Wii version of Godzilla Unleashed states that he was upgraded as well using the latest Vortac technology, referencing Gigan having the Showa design in the previous two Atari Pipeworks games. The Vastatosaurus was created by Peter Jackson, Greg Broadmoor, and Christian Pierce, and debuted in Universal's 2005 film, King Kong. They measure 12 to 15 meters from snout to tail and were designed not as realistic dinosaurs, but as the most terrifying monster that Kong could fight. The name Vastatosaurus Rex means Ravager Lizard King, 
derived from the Latin word vastato, which is a conjugation of the word vasto, meaning to devastate, ravage, or to lay waste. In universe, during the 2005 prequel to the film, King Kong, the Island of the Skull, a sailor named Sam Kelly, who was trapped on Skull Island, named the Vistatosaurus V-Rex, after noticing that it was too large and ferocious to be a Tyrannosaurus. Unlike their Tyrannosaurus ancestors, the Statosaurus have three clawed digits on their hands and are covered in rough, pronounced crocodilian scales. In order to better wind through the dense jungles of Skull Island at high speeds, the Vistatosaurus developed a waist and hip bones. Male Vistatosaurus develop small crests on their heads and are typically more muscular than females. In designer Greg Broadmoor's words, we worked on making it nasty and smelly, which is a recurring theme in the movie. To put crocodile scales on a dinosaur is ludicrous, but it makes it look cooler and gives it an older-fashioned Ray Harryhausen-esque look. The Vistatosaurus rex is the result of a population of Tyrannosaurus rex continuing to evolve in isolation on Skull Island over millions of years. The V-Rexes appeared primarily in fight scenes in both the film and its prequel novel, King Kong, The Island of the Skull. In early concept art for the film, the Statosaurus are portrayed as brown T-Rexes. There was also talk of having the V-Rex stand upright like Tyrannosaurus were originally thought to do. Weta Workshop artists Greg Broadmoor and Christian Pierce were responsible for designing the V-Rex, with Broadmoor commenting in The Making of King Kong, the official guide to the motion picture, that he had probably done 20 to 30 designs before settling on the final appearance. Vostatosaurus Rex is a tribute to the Tyrannosaurus Rex from the original 1933 King Kong film, in that they share some of the T-Rex's erroneous design features, such as the pebbly skin and three fingers. V-Rexes are suggested to partake in inbreeding. This is emphasized in reference to the family seen in the film, as designer Greg Broadmoor referred to them as this group of ornery yokels, this inbred family of dinosaurs. The crocodilian approach to V-Rex's scales made sculpting their animation maquettes a very time-consuming process. It took the way to workshop team six months to complete them. And that's Wikizilla's kaiju profile on the Vistatosaurus Rex. This incarnation of Kong has debuted in Legendary Pictures 2017 film, Kong, Skull Island. He stands 31.6 meters, or 104 feet tall, and weighs 158 tons. The legendary Kong in this film is mentioned to still be young and growing, meaning he's not at his full size yet and still has the potential to grow way larger. Compared to the other incarnations of King Kong, the legendary Kong is the tallest American King Kong in film as of 2017, and the second tallest in film overall behind the 1962 King Kong. Kong sports longer legs than a real gorilla and stands more like a human by consequence. He has gray skin with a long scar crossing diagonally down his chest and prominent canine teeth. Most of Kong's body is covered in short, matted brown hair, save for his face, chest, hands, and feet, and two small ears with one missing a small portion of flesh. Kong was a member of a species of giant hominids living on Skull Island along with his parents until they were killed by skull crawlers, leaving Kong orphaned. While still a juvenile, Kong took to protecting the indigenous Iwi people on the island to protect them from the skull crawlers that took his parents. After assuming the role of guardian and god to the Iwi people while still not yet fully grown, Kong made it his purpose to protect the island from the skull crawlers that lived below the surface. Sometime into his reign in 1944, Kong discovered two World War II soldiers fighting on the island. They managed to survive the encounter and came to live with the Iwi. The legendary King Kong is rather strong, being able to effortlessly crush UH-1 Iroquois helicopters under the weight of his hands, pick up heavy objects, and rip the Skull Devil's innards out from its body entirely, plus fling a ship's propeller flail with incredible might. Kong can withstand various serious injuries ranging from a shredded bicep from helicopter blades to having his entire body doused in napalm and still be up to fighting in a relatively short amount of time. Kong has shown remarkable intelligence known to primates in the ability to make and use primitive tools through his development of a ship's propeller flail. 
Kong was realized primarily through keyframe animation, although Toby Cabell and Terry Nottery performed in a facial capture session and movement capture session respectively. Terry Nottery, curiously, is actually credited on the poster for Kong Skull Island, a rare occasion seeing as motion capture actors rarely receive top billing in a major film's poster. Supervising sound editor and sound designer Al Nelson used sounds from lions, gorillas, and monkeys as bases for Kong's roar. When designing King Kong, the designers looked to the Kong from the original film as a reference. Director John Vo Roberts had said designing and creating Kong was a huge part of the movie, and has stated that Kong's design was meant to be hopefully iconic, so that a third grader could draw the shape and it be instantly recognizable. In addition, he said that he and his team of filmmakers intentionally tried to make this Kong's design different from the 2005 Peter Jackson design to show that it was its own species and it would have its own set of rules. There's much more that went into the design behind the 2017 King Kong, and we might go into his design process in a later video. During the film's final battle, Kong appears to attempt to pry open and break the giant skull crawler's jaws. This is a reference to Kong's preferred tactic of breaking an opponent's jaws, which he demonstrates in the original film, King Kong Escapes, and the 1976 and 2005 remakes. According to Vo Roberts, the first script of the film he read took place in 1917, though Roberts later conceived the idea of setting the film during the Vietnam War. When he pitched the idea to Legendary, Vo Roberts told Empire Magazine that he thought Legendary would laugh him out of the room. But to his surprise, Legendary liked the idea and the setting was changed. Max Bornstein's script also gave the expedition to Skull Island a different motive. The brother of Tom Hiddleston's character was marooned there while searching for the Titan Serum, capable of curing all disease. Interestingly, Kong Skull Island is the first American-made live-action King Kong film where Kong is not killed or seemingly killed at the film's end, and the only live-action King Kong film where Kong never leaves his island and is brought to human civilization. One last interesting tidbit, a gigantic, approximately $44,000 animatronic made for the Vietnamese premiere of Kong Skull Island at Ho Chi Minh went up in flames during the premiere night. After 15 minutes of panic, firefighters were able to extinguish the flame. And that's all there is to know about the legendary King Kong, at least until The Birth of Kong wraps up and Godzilla vs. Kong releases. More on that as it develops. Anyway, thank you for watching and we'll catch you later. Kiryu is the third incarnation of the Mechagodzilla character, first appearing in the 2002 film Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, and was created by Masaki Tezuka. It stands 60 meters tall and weighs 36,000 metric tons by itself and 40,000 with its battle pack attached. Kiryu's name comes from the Japanese words Ki and Ryu, which together mean Machine Dragon. Kiryu's primary legal name is simply Mechagodzilla, while his official designation in the films is MFS-3, which is short for Multipurpose Fighting System Type 3. Kiryu is also trademarked by Toho, as seen in the copyright information for the game Godzilla Unleashed. Absolute Zero Weapon Kiryu's Absolute Zero Weapon, built into his chest, fires a beam which brings its target to the lowest theoretical temperature in existence, 0 degrees Kelvin, or Absolute Zero, at which point the atoms affected would cease all movement. Kiryu was able to cause entire buildings to disintegrate with this attack. In Godzilla Rulers of Earth, Jaguar had Kiryu use the weapon to freeze Destoroya completely. And then... In addition to a mouth-based Mazer Cannon, Kiryu had his Absolute Zero weapon replaced with three chest-mounted Mazer Cannons called the Triple Hyper Mazer Cannon, with each one capable of emitting blasts of electricity. Weapons Attachment Kiryu's weapon attachment hosts a small arsenal of missiles and other projectiles, as well as blades that extend from its two gauntlet pieces. Agility Kiryu is a well-balanced machine and the most agile Mechagodzilla to date. Physical Capabilities For close combat, a short blade can be extended from Kiryu's right wrist which was not only able to penetrate Godzilla's nearly impervious hide, but was also able to discharge a crippling electrical surge into his opponent's body. In Godzilla Tokyo SOS, Kiryu's arsenal was upgraded to allow its right hand to collapse into a revolving drill. Despite his agility, Kiryu is incredibly strong, being able to grab Godzilla by the tail and swing him around with ease. 
flight. Like the previous Mecha Godzilla's, Kiryu was also able to fly, although its limited energy reserves required the machine to be airlifted to the battlefield by two white herons. Weaknesses Due to being constructed around the original Godzilla's remains, the first Godzilla spirit is still attached to Kiryu, and has overridden all external control over the mech in two instances. Also, since it has limited power reserves, Kiryu can only be in action for at least two hours or less when the use of Absolute Zero is involved. Kiryu was designed by Shinji Nishikawa, an artist who did concept art for most of the Heisei and Millennium Godzilla films. The idea of having the original Godzilla come back to life was used for the cancelled Godzilla vs. Ghost Godzilla, originally intended to end the Heisei series. The title card for Godzilla against Mechagodzilla may allude to this, as it initially reads Godzilla vs. Godzilla before displaying the film's true title. While the real title for what fans called Godzilla vs. Ghost Godzilla was actually also, Godzilla vs. Godzilla. In the international English dub for Godzilla Tokyo SOS, Kyu is referred to as Mecha G, Mecha G, presumably to avoid confusing viewers who had not seen Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla, which explained the Mecha's name was Kyu. In the video games Godzilla Destroy a Monstrous Melee and Godzilla Save the Earth, Kyu is called Mecha Godzilla 3. Mecha Godzilla. Due to being the third distinct iteration of Mechagodzilla and to distinguish him from the other Mechagodzilla featured in the games. In the Godzilla comic series published by IDW, Kiryu is only ever referred to as Mechagodzilla. As all of you probably know if you're a Godzilla fan, many of Toho's kaiju have their own copyright icons. All three Mechagodzillas, the Showa Mechagodzilla 1 and 2, plus the Heisei Mechagodzilla and Kiryu, all share the Mechagodzilla legal name and copyright icon. As mentioned before, Kiryu was also at least at one point its own trademark, but in recent DVD and Blu-ray releases, Kiryu exclusively uses the Mechagodzilla name. Mysteriously, only in Godzilla Save the Earth's opening disclaimers, Kiryu has its own copyright icon, labeled Mechagodzilla MFS 3. This copyright icon has never and was never used beyond that ever again. That's all we have for Kiryu. Biolante is a tribrid kaiju made from the DNA of a human, a rose, and Godzilla, created by Kazuki Omori and Shinichiro Kobayashi that debuted in 1989's Godzilla vs. Biolante. In her rose form, Biolante stands 85 meters tall and weighs from 60,000 to 100,000 metric tons. She stands 120 meters tall with a weight of 200,000 metric tons in her final form. Biolante was perhaps the first Godzilla monster to go through a substantial design process, with a lot of concept art for her being made during the development of Godzilla vs. Biolante. The original writer of Godzilla vs. Biolante, a dentist by the name of Shinichiro Kobayashi, originally envisioned Biolante as being the result of Dr. Shiranoi, their earlier name for Dr. Shiragami, mixing the cells of his dead daughter with that of a tropical plant. Biolante was only meant to have a single form and battle with Godzilla at the end of the movie and it was envisioned to have the face of a woman, a design element that was played around with but later abandoned, and also had suggested for it to have poisonous petals that resemble butterfly wings, also a discarded idea. Some of the first pieces of Biolante concept art were done by artist Kako Yodane, who had a lot of experience with previous shows such as The Return of Ultraman and Mirror Man, and put them in an art book published in April 2014. Yodane based Biolante's rose form off the emergency directive 10-4-10-10 creature he had previously designed, drawing Utsubo. There was also an idea where Biolante had legs and could walk. For her final form, he submitted a four-legged Biolante concept inspired by the Return of Ultraman monster Leogon, who he previously designed, and who Biolante's original maker Kobayashi also created. Other design ideas for Biolante have been included in the books Heisei Godzilla Perfection and Shinji Nishikawa, Drawing Book of Godzilla. Some of the concept art was handled by Ko Yokoyama and Yuto Matsubara. Shinji Nishikawa did a lot of close to final concept art on the final form as well, brought on by Gunhead and Godzilla vs. Biolante special effects director Koichi Kawakita. Shinji Nishikawa elaborated that an emphasis was put on constructing parts of animals vegetatively. These concept designs range from ones incorporating original design elements of Biolante to a giant walking flower monster, a multi-legged plant creature, a more Godzilla-like plant construct with rose petals and tendril tails, 
a spiny flower, a thin flower, and thinner versions of the final design appearance until it gradually became finalized, with close to final designs featuring her with legs, a tail, and with different heads. In some concepts of her head, her mouth would open circularly, and in others she would have jaws but a circular mouth hole with teeth, plus eyes that she could hide inside her jaw or outside her jaw. In another concept, she would have a very wide, flat, leaf-like head lined with teeth. For her rose form, there are concepts that give her a full-fledged head rather than a jaw instead of a rosebud as in her final design. Other artwork has the rose form look more like a simple flower. Before her design was finalized, there was also art with her having a large eye on the stem below the rosebud. There is also a strange design that makes Rose Violante look almost alien in appearance. Art director Tetsuzo Ozawa, as well as other higher-ups from Toho, decided on these final concept artworks for modeling the Violante puppets. The final rose form design looked like a rose flower with a snout inside its butt and a white stem with tendrils and vines tipped with Venus flytrap heads, and her final form possessed an elongated Godzilla-like head with a plant mass body four main root-like appendages with mouth tendrils with additional mouth vines, and an orange nucleus covered by a mass of vines, plus leaf-like structures reminiscent of Godzilla's dorsal plates. With an imposing, heavy and powerful appearance on top of starring in a well-off Godzilla film, Balante is a fan-favorite Heizei Kaiju as a result. Tendrils Biolante possesses tendrils that resemble spears and are capable of piercing through Godzilla's skin with relative ease, plus constrict and grapple objects or creatures, as well as mouth vines. Biolante uses the stubby, root-like bases of her four main tendrils to move across the ground. Acid Sap Biolante is capable of spitting a powerful, corrosive sap from her mouth. Energy Spores Biolante is capable of breaking into a cloud of spores when she is severely wounded and moved through the air. She used this to survive both of her fights against Godzilla. Tunneling Biolante can ingrain her vines and tendrils and then have them rise up from the ground further away from her in a surprise attack. This ability is seen specifically in the PS3 and PS4 Godzilla as well as the IDW comic series Godzilla Cataclysm. In Godzilla Unleashed, Bailande has the ability to submerge her entire body underground and tunnel around, surfacing to overwhelm foes. Bailante is the only monster in the Heisei series that Godzilla faces who is unable to fly in any capacity. Both Bailante's first and final forms were portrayed from the inside by Sidractor Takegami Akio. Also, the final form was additionally controlled by a crew of 20 people who manipulated 32 piano wires to mobilize the beast. In the 1992 manga, the Godzilla comic reads again, in one of the stories in the manga and one of Balante's strangest appearances, a group of zillions unleash King Ghidorah to try to take over the Earth. King Ghidorah begins to fly to Earth, but is stopped by Balante, who is living in space debris. During the battle between them, King Ghidorah strikes Balante with his gravity beams. Biolante absorbs the essence of its power and then becomes a plant-like King Ghidorah clone. Even with Biolante's enhancement, it is still defeated. A new Biolante called Neo Biolante also makes an appearance in the Kodansha manga, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, where she is created by Dr. Oniyama. The monster, King Godzilla, an amalgamation of Godzilla, King Ghidorah, and Batra from the second volume of the Kodansha manga, can also transform his chest into a Biolante head. Biolante was intended to appear in Atari's 2004 fighting game, Godzilla Save the Earth, but was scrapped at the last minute due to licensing issues. A fully functional, playable Biolante is present in the game's data, with a complete moveset and everything. She was, however, made playable in the Wii version of the sequel, Godzilla Unleashed. That's our episode on Biolante. Mothra first appeared in the 1961 serialized novel The Luminous Fairies and Mothra, written by Takehiko Fukunaga, Shinichiro Nakamura, and Yoshie Hota, and published in Asahi Weekly magazine. The novel was quickly adapted into a film by Ishiro Honda and Shinichi Sakizawa. To get this out of the way quickly, there are three generations of Mothras in the Showa series. The first Mothra appears in the 1961 film Mothra and then dies in Mothra vs. Godzilla. The second generation Mothras were twins hatched from an egg in Mothra vs. Godzilla. In between the events of Mothra vs. Godzilla and Ghidorah, the three-headed monster, one of these larvae died. 
The remaining larva went on to fight King Ghidorah alongside Rodan and Godzilla, and return in imago form in Ibira, Horror of the Deep. Finally, a third Mothra appears and destroys all monsters. Her relation to the previous Mothras is unknown. In the original 1961 movie, the first Mothra measured 180 meters from head to tail as a larva and 80 meters in imago form with the wingspan of 250 meters. Mothra is the guardian goddess of the remote infant island in the South Pacific Ocean. There, she is perpetually reborn through an egg and is worshipped by the island's natives. She is spoken for by two miniature telepathic fairies called the Shobijin. Mothra After a scientific expedition to the irradiated infant island by the country of Olisica, the Shobijin fairies were kidnapped by enterprising businessman Clark Nelson. They began to pray for their rescue to Mothra, who hatched from its egg in response and made its way to Tokyo. Mothra survived the barrage of military attacks on its way and made a cocoon on Tokyo Tower. When Nelson was forced to release the Shobijin, he returned in secret to Relisica with his captives. When Mothra came out of her cocoon, she continued her mission to rescue the Shobijin by tracking Nelson to Relisica's New Kirk City. The New Kirk police found and killed Nelson in a firefight, and the Shobijin were returned to Mothra at a nearby airport runway. Mothra vs. Godzilla after a hurricane, an enormous egg washed ashore in Japan. While the scientific community attempted to study the egg, a businessman bought the egg from the villagers who discovered it and planned to build an amusement park around it. The Shobijin then appeared to the businessman and his employer, Jiro Torahata, and explained that the egg was Mothra's and that they should return it to Infant Island. The fairies were then laughed out of the office. They sought the help of the scientific team that had been interested in studying the egg. While they wanted to help, they were powerless against the laws protecting ownership of the egg. During a later experiment, Godzilla rose out of the earlier hurricane's floodplain. The scientific team then went to Infant Island where they asked the islanders and the Shobijin for Mothra's help in eliminating Godzilla. They were refused by the Infant Island chief as revenge for their nuclear testing that had devastated the island and for their failure to return the egg. They then spoke to the Shobijin, who wanted to help them, but felt Mothra had grown too weak to return to the island after the battle. Despite their concerns, Mothra arrived just as Godzilla was attacking her egg, saving it at the cost of her own life. Soon afterwards, the egg hatched two larval Mothras that followed Godzilla to a nearby island and encased him in silk until he fell into the ocean. Ghidorah, the Three-Headed Monster When King Ghidorah came to Earth in an asteroid, Godzilla and Rodan were awakened and began to fight. After its twin died of unknown causes, the last remaining Mothra and the Shobijin left their island to try to unite the monsters against King Ghidorah, but they made it clear that they had no intention of helping mankind. Mothra then went on to fight a losing battle against Ghidorah, which inspired Godzilla and Rodan to help in light of Mothra's selflessness. With their combined efforts, they were able to drive off the alien threat, and Mothra swam back to Infant Island. Ibira, Horror of the Deep after a terrorist organization named Red Bamboo kidnapped dozens of infant islanders and put them to work producing a chemical that would keep the giant prawn Ibira away from their ships, the few remaining islanders began to attempt to awaken the now fully grown Mothra from her sleep to embark on a rescue mission. Eventually, Mothra awoke and headed to Lechi Island where the Red Bamboo was stationed, just as Godzilla was destroying it. Mothra rescued the islanders and prepared to leave the island, but Godzilla began to fight her. Realizing the countdown was almost up, Mothra knocked Godzilla down and flew away, traveling back to the safety of Infant Island with the natives. Mothra later made stock footage appearances in All Monsters Attack and Godzilla vs. Gigan. In the latter, a Mothra larva is seen living on Monster Island. Given that this Mothra appears only through Destroy All Monsters stock footage, it's unknown if this is the third generation Mothra or the offspring of the second generation Mothra, meaning someone in between. Mothra also makes erroneous stock footage appearances for split seconds during kaiju fights later in the movie. Destroy All Monsters The officially designated third generation Mothra, whose relation to the previous Mothras is unknown, is shown living in Monsterland with the rest of the world's kaiju at the end of the 20th century, so that they could be researched by the scientists on the island. Eventually, the Monsterland facility was taken over by the Kilak alien race, who took control of the monsters and sent them to destroy major cities in the world. Mothra was sent to Beijing, China. After being put back under the control of the United Nations Science Committee, Mothra joined the rest of her Monsterland inmates to attack King Ghidorah at the Kilax stronghold in Mount Fuji. When the Kilax were defeated, Mothra and the other monsters returned to Monsterland where they continued their lives.
In her larval form, Mothra's main weapon is streams of silk that she can shoot from her mouth. Strength and Durability In addition to being virtually impervious to conventional weapons, Mothra has exhibited immense physical strength, able to drag Godzilla across the ground by his tail or knock him off his feet with a swing of her wings. Asexual Reproduction Mothra is capable of laying eggs without a breeding partner, and can lay eggs that hatch at least one larva. Flight Imago Mothra is able to fly at speeds of Mach 3. Poison Powder Mothra can release clouds of toxic yellow powder from her wings. The Shobujin refer to this attack as her final weapon, and using this attack results in Mothra's death. The first Mothra larva suit was operated like a Chinese dragon, with Haru and Nakajima in the front, and the other suit actors behind. The suit was nearly 40 feet in length. This was the only time Toho used such an approach for one of their kaiju. In the original 1961 novel, Mothra's Shobijin are referred to as the Aidena, with the most notable difference between them being that there were many more Aidena, rather than just two. In the American poster for Mothra vs. Godzilla, Mothra was depicted as a giant otherworldly creature with tentacles, referred to only as the Thing. Though this was censored on most posters, an uncensored interpretation of this can be seen in its entirety on the Italian poster. She is also called The Thing several times during the English dub. Destroy All Monsters is the only movie Mothra appeared in during the Showa era where she is not seen with her Shobijin. Though it may seem like Mothra and Godzilla were enemies in Nibira, Horror of the Deep, this was because the role for Godzilla was originally written with King Kong in mind. Anatomical diagrams of Mothra reveal interesting anatomical features. The larval Mothra, aside from plainly obvious features such as her eyes, possesses a cerebral ganglion, the equivalent of a brain, a powerful stomach, respiratory force, or spiracles, cilia, a spinning sac, a nerve ganglion, a threat sac, an esophagus, a muscle for moving her sturdy jaw, antennae, and an anus. For Imago Mothra, the individual strands of feathers that make up Mothra's wings can secrete her poison powder. In addition, she has lungs, an ovipositor, an organ for laying eggs, with an egg sac, a malipigian tubule system, intestines, and an anus. Other features include her compound eyes, her antennae, which sense the Shobijin's telepathy, a trachea, and other systems carried over from her larval form. She's also said to exude a vapor that makes radiation harmless. And that's Wikizilla's kaiju profile on the Showa era's Mothras. Toho's iteration of King Kong debuted in Toho's 1962 film, King Kong vs. Godzilla. He stood 45 meters tall and weighed 20,500 metric tons, while the second Toho Kong, appearing in 1967's King Kong Escapes, was 20 meters in height and 10,000 metric tons in weight. For comparison, the 2005 King Kong stood at 7.62 meters, and the legendary Kong, at least during the events of Kong Skull Island, stands at 31.6 meters. While his origin is left somewhat ambiguous, Kong was worshipped by the natives of Faroe Island, who fed him a type of berry known as Feralactin, so mind the American version, in order to sedate him when he came to their village. In King Kong Escapes, Kong lived on Mondo Island, where he was worshipped by the islanders there as well. King Kong vs. Godzilla In King Kong vs. Godzilla, after being incapacitated with Feralactin juice in celebration by the natives of Faroe Island for a victory against a giant octopus, Kong was kidnapped by an expedition party sent to capture him to combat the popularity of Godzilla's most recent attack in the media. Kong was fastened to a raft and was trailed behind a boat bound for Japan, but awoke en route and escaped. After reaching Japan, Kong came across Godzilla who attacked him, causing Kong to retreat. After their first encounter, the JSDF set up high-tension wires around Tokyo, which successfully repelled Godzilla but only made Kong stronger. Kong strode into the city, picked up a woman named Fumiko while attacking a train, and climbed up the National Diet Building. Unable to fire on him without endangering Fumiko, the JSCF detonated capsules full of ferrolactin around Kong to impair him. Once he had collapsed in front of the Diet, soldiers tethered him to balloons in order to float him to Mount Fuji, where Godzilla was roaming, in the hopes that they would kill each other. They fought fiercely, but Godzilla gained the upper hand, half burying Kong under rocks and setting the force around him ablaze. With Kong dazed and almost unconscious, Godzilla taunted Kong and prepared to walk back down the mountain. Suddenly, a well-timed electrical storm gave Kong a second wind and an electrified grip. Their battle resumed, with Kong now possessing the strength necessary to fight Godzilla all the way down the mountain. 
after battling their way through the countryside at the foot of the mountain, demolishing a Tommy castle along the way. The two monsters fell off a cliff and into the ocean. Kong was the only one to surface and began to swim away. King Kong Escapes King Kong's next appearance in a Toho film was in King Kong Escapes. This is a different King Kong, less than half the size of the 1962 King Kong. Although Gorosaurus would appear and destroy our monsters, he does not exist in the same continuity as the Kong who fought Godzilla. After noticing the theropod, Gorosaurus menacing Susan Watson, a lieutenant on a United Nations submarine undergoing repairs near Mondo Island, Kong left his cave to defend her. During the fight, Watson fled with the rest of her expedition party, and Kong followed their hovercraft into the shallows surrounding his island. There they were attacked by a giant sea serpent, which Kong also defeated before beginning to shake the submarine in hopes that Susan would come back. After she explained to Kong that they had to leave him, he let the vessel go. Shortly thereafter, he was gassed by helicopters under the command of the scientist Doctor Who who wanted to use Kong to mine Element X in the Arctic as his own invention, Mechani Kong, was unable to cope with the radiation. In order to control Kong, Doctor Who kidnapped Susan Watson and two of her shipmates. However, instead of allowing Kong to be controlled through them, they freed Kong, who then escaped into the ocean. As a consequence, Susan was loaded onto one of Doctor Who's ships to try and get the gorilla back under control. After reaching Tokyo, Doctor Who released Mechani Kong in the city. In an attempt to gain leverage over Kong, Mechani Kong grabbed Susan and climbed Tokyo Tower where Doctor Who threatened to drop her if Kong did not back down. Instead, Kong climbed up the tower to save her. Mechani Kong dropped Susan, but she was saved by King Kong before a defector on Doctor Who's ship destroyed Mechani Kong's control module, sending the robot plummeting into the street below. Susan then begged Kong to stop Who's ship, which was leaving the harbor. Kong sank the ship and then began swimming back to Mondo Island. Physical Strength Kong possesses immense physical strength, able to swing Godzilla by the tail or throw him over his shoulder with ease. Electric Conductivity In King Kong vs. Godzilla, Kong has the ability to store and redistribute electrical currents that pass through his body through touch. Radiation Resistance In King Kong Escapes, Kong is unaffected by the radiation given off by Element X. The battles in King Kong vs. Godzilla were choreographed by suit actors Shoichi Hirose as Kong and Haruo Nakajima as Godzilla, who patterned them after pro wrestling. Incredibly, Hirose performed Kong's shoulder flip of Godzilla without the aid of wires. Both Kong suits had built-in arm extensions to achieve a more gorilla-like appearance. The Toho King Kong's roars ended up being reused for multiple kaiju long after Toho lost the rights to Kong, including King Caesar, the T-Rex from The Last Dinosaur, whose roars were also mixed with Godzilla's, Gabora from the original Ultraman, and Gudon from The Return of Ultraman. Like a number of Toho props, the King Kong vs. Godzilla Kong suit was later reused by Tsuburaya Productions. After a facelift, it became the giant monkey kaiju Goro in an episode of Ultra Q. The 1966 film Ebira, Horror of the Deep, was originally planned as an adaptation of the Rankin Bass cartoon, The King Kong Show, titled Operation Robinson Crusoe, King Kong vs. Ebira. Rankin Bass rejected the script on the grounds that it bore little resemblance to the show. Undaunted, Toho fitted Godzilla into Kong's role. As a result, he displayed several Kong-like traits throughout the film, such as his revival by lightning and fascination with Kumi Izuno's character, Daiyo. In Toho's 1973 television series, Go! Green Man, the Kong suit from King Kong Escapes appeared under the name Gorilla, as Toho no longer had the rights to the character. Gorilla was created by the demon Tonchiki to collect the blood of children to resurrect the demon king Mao. Gorilla competed unsuccessfully in a sumo match against Green Man. The suit no longer contained the poles necessary for the actor inside to operate its elongated arms. As a result, Gorilla's hands have a tendency to flop around. Toho actually pondered a King Kong vs. Godzilla remake for release in 1991, but was unable to acquire the rights from the character from Turner Entertainment. Toho's second proposal, in which Godzilla would face an updated Mechani Kong, was equally unsuccessful. 
King Ghidorah was created by Shinichi Sekizawa, Eiji Tsuburaya, Ishiro Honda, and Tomoyuki Tanaka to be the antagonist of Ghidorah, the three-headed monster. King Ghidorah was brought to life on the movie screen by a stunt actor inside an elaborate three-piece suit with a team of puppeteers to control the suit's many appendages. The Ghidorah part of Ghidorah's name comes from the Japanese word for Hydra, Hidora, which is spelled very similarly to the Japanese katakana for Ghidorah. Ghidorah is a giant dragon monster standing erect with golden scales adorning its body, three heads on long necks, giant bat-like wings, two legs and two tails. King Ghidorah's multiple heads were inspired by the Yamata no Orochi, an eight-headed dragon from Japanese mythology. The heads of this suit have two curved horns on both sides with a crescent in the middle and a mane on each one, much like the appearance of a Chinese or Japanese dragon. It also has a row of spines running down each neck, while the ventral side sports snake-like overlapping plates. In the Showa series, King Ghidorah is an inherently evil, ancient extraterrestrial dragon said to have wiped out Venus's entire civilization many thousands of years ago for the fun of it. He later attacked Earth, but was repelled by Earth's monsters. At some point, he was taken control of by the Zillians, and used as a pawn in their invasion of Earth. King Ghidorah was destined to be taken control of by different alien races, losing his history on the way. Ghidorah, the Three-Headed Monster Thousands of years ago, King Ghidorah attacked the planet Venus, eradicating the planet's advanced civilization and rendering Venus an uninhabitable wasteland. The few Venusians that survived the monster's attacks fled to Earth, where they interbred with the native humans and gradually began to lose their identity. In the present day, a meteor shower was visible in the skies above Earth, with one meteor crashing down in the Kurobe Valley in Japan. A scientific team led by Professor Murai traveled to the valley to examine the meteor, which exuded a strange glow and even produced its own magnetic field that fluctuated in strength. After several days of study, Murai and his colleagues observed that the meteor was actually growing in size. One day, the meteor began producing an extremely powerful magnetic field before splitting open and launching a ball of fire into the sky above. The fireball exploded several times before finally taking the form of King Ghidorah, having come to do to Earth what it did to Venus in the past. King Ghidorah flew over Japan, leveling cities effortlessly with his gravity beams. As the cosmic terror approached the Mount Fuji area, Mothra tried to convince her fellow Earth monsters Godzilla and Rodan to cease their fighting and join forces against King Ghidorah. The monsters refused, forcing Mothra to take on King Ghidorah by herself. King Ghidorah blasted the larva with his gravity beams, arousing the anger of Godzilla and Rodan, who finally entered the battle. While King Ghidorah was more powerful than the three monsters individually, he was no match for their combined might and was beaten into submission and covered in a silken cocoon. As Godzilla pelted King Ghidorah with boulders and threw him off a cliff, King Ghidorah finally retreated and flew back into the void of outer space. Invasion of Astro Monster When the astronauts Fuji and Glenn arrived on the newly discovered Planet X, they encountered an intelligent and technologically advanced alien race called the Zillians. The Zillian's leader, the controller of Planet X, explained that his people lived in constant terror due to the attacks of a horrific space monster known as Monster Zero. The controller showed the two a video feed of the creature, revealing it to be none other than King Ghidorah. The controller explained that he knew Godzilla and Rodan drove off King Ghidorah when the monster attacked Earth, and asked his people be allowed to borrow the two monsters to fight off King Ghidorah on Planet X. When the two astronauts returned to Earth and received the support of the world's leaders, the Zillions revealed themselves, having already been operating on Earth in secret. The controller apologized for the secrecy, but thanked Earth's leaders and ordered the Zillions' UFOs to transport Godzilla and Rodan to Planet X, with Glenn, Fuji, and their superior Dr. Sakurai accompanying them to oversee the mission. When the monsters were placed on Planet X, King Ghidorah flew overhead and attacked them. Godzilla and Rodan joined forces again and managed to force the space monster to the retreat. The controller remarked that this was a triumphant day for Planet X and provided Glenn and Fuji with a tape he claimed contained the cure for cancer. The controller sent the astronauts on their way, keeping Godzilla and Rodan on Planet X. When the astronauts returned to Earth, they found that the tape was actually an ultimatum demanding that the Earth surrender to Planet X and become a colony. King Ghidorah had actually been under the Zillion's control the entire time, and now both Godzilla and Rodan had become their pawns as well. When humanity refused to surrender, the Zillions released the mind-controlled Godzilla, Rodan, and King Ghidorah on Earth to destroy its major cities. 
Thankfully, Fuji and several Earth scientists discovered a device capable of breaking the aliens' control over the monsters. The device was activated, but the JSDF assaulted the Zillions' hidden base. The Zillions lost their control over the monsters, while their forces were defeated by the JSDF. When Godzilla regained consciousness, he woke up Rodan and the two attacked King Ghidorah once again. During the battle, Rodan grabbed Godzilla and carried him in the air, slamming him into King Ghidorah and sending all three monsters plummeting into the sea below. After a few moments, King Ghidorah flew out of the water and retreated back to outer space, while Godzilla and Rodan disappeared beneath the waves. Godzilla vs. Gigan as part of their plan to conquer the Earth, the M Space Hunter Nebula aliens took control of King Ghidorah and allied him with their own cybernetic monster, Gigan. Controlling the two monsters from the Godzilla Tower located in World Children's Land, the Nebulans unleashed Gigan and King Ghidorah in Tokyo. The space monsters raised the city and withstood all of the JSDF's attempts to stop them, leaving humanity helpless. Thankfully, Godzilla and Anguirus became aware of the invader's scheme. They swam to Tokyo to battle Gigan and King Ghidorah. However, King Ghidorah and his cybernetic ally proved to be more than a match for the Earth monsters. Godzilla was badly wounded by Gigan's hook-tipped appendages and the Godzilla Tower's laser beam, leaving Anguirus at the mercy of both space monsters. Fortunately, a group of humans managed to destroy the Godzilla Tower, severing the Nebulans control over Gigan and King Ghidorah and leaving them confused. Godzilla and Anguirus regrouped and assaulted their foes once more, seizing the upper hand. Gigan eventually retreated, allowing Godzilla and Anguirus to double-team King Ghidorah. Godzilla held King Ghidorah still from behind while Anguirus rammed him with his spiky carapace. King Ghidorah soon retreated as well, leaving Godzilla and Anguirus victorious and the Earth safe once again. Zone Fighter King Ghidorah was taken control of by an evil race of aliens called the Garulas. While on Earth, King Ghidorah was confronted by Zone Fighter, who defeated the Space Demon after a vicious struggle. King Ghidorah managed to escape with his life, something few of Zone Fighter's enemies, not even Gigan, managed to do. Destroy All Monsters While the crew of the Moonlight SY-3 destroyed the device the Keelax were using to control Earth's monsters, Godzilla and his fellow monsters assembled near the Keelax base at Mount Fuji, preparing to assault it. The Keelax proceeded to unleash their trump card, King Ghidorah, to defend their base. King Ghidorah descended and attacked Earth's monsters, managing to hold its own against several opponents. As King Ghidorah battled with Godzilla and his allies, Lorosaurus landed a devastating kangaroo kick on his back, knocking him to the ground. Godzilla proceeded to stomp on King Ghidorah's necks, causing him to cuff up blood. Manila fired a smoke ring that choked King Ghidorah's remaining head and caused it to fall into the ground. When Godzilla found the Keelox base and destroyed it, it caused a huge fissure to open in the ground, with King Ghidorah's lifeless body falling into it. With King Ghidorah defeated for good and the alien invasion thwarted, Godzilla and the other monsters returned to Monsterland to live out their days in peace. Originally, before the production of Ghidorah, the three-headed monster, this suit had purple scales and rainbow-colored detail on the wings, but later on, the entire body was recolored into a gold color. The Showa Ghidorah was portrayed through an actor inside the middle head, who would hunch over holding a pole, with the necks and heads being controlled by wires. His design was mostly created by Eiji Tsuburaya, based on a minimal description in the script. It has three heads, two tails, and a voice like a bell. In Ghidorah, the three-headed monster, not once, at least on screen, did Godzilla use his atomic breath against King Ghidorah in battle, while he does use it repeatedly with no apparent effect against Rodan. King Ghidorah would go on to become one of Toho's big five monsters. As such, he returned for many films after their Showa era ended and became one of Godzilla's most recognizable foes. Dinosaur was created by Yukiko Takayama, Yushiro Honda, and Teruyoshi Nakano and debuted in Toho's 1975 Terror of Mecha Godzilla. He stands at 60 meters tall and weighs 30,000 metric tons. The dinosaur was portrayed by Tatsumi Nikamoto, who also portrayed Zone Fighter and Ultraman Leo. Titanosaurus is a peaceful Pacific-based amphibious dinosaur and lived on the bottom of the ocean. It was not in Titanosaurus' nature to attack, but eventually, Dr. Shinzo Mafune discovered a way to control the dinosaur to do his bidding. In Godzilla of the Game's Kaiju Guide, Mafune's control over Titanosaurus is attributed to a device implanted in the monster's head. In the video game Godzilla Unleashed, Titanosaurus is ironically capable of emitting sonic waves from his mouth, despite sonic waves being his weakness. 
Titanosaurus's roars are modified from the Ultraman Ace Kaiju, Brocken. The monster's roars were used for the video game exclusive Kaiju, Barugaron, from Godzilla Trading Battle. They were also reused for the Crocomire and Fantoon bosses of the Metroid series. Titanosaurus is the last monster to be defeated by Godzilla in the Showa series. He is also one of the few kaiju to be defeated by the combined efforts of Godzilla and humans. In an earlier version of Terror of Mechagodzilla, screenwriter Yukiko Takayama stated that in place of Titanosaurus, Godzilla would have fought two dinosaurs named the Titans. These dinosaurs would normally be peaceful, but would become very violent when their necks wreathed together. The dinosaurs were dubbed Titan 1 and Titan 2. In Terror of Mechagodzilla, Titanosaurus is always referred to as a Kyoryu, or dinosaur, rather than as a Kaiju. Yukiko Takayama made it clear in a 2010 G-Fan Spring interview that this was the case because Titanosaurus was originally a very quiet, friendly dinosaur. He survived deep in the sea, but Dr. Mafune did something to him, and then he became violent. That is why he is not a Kaiju, but a Kyoryu. To clarify, this does not mean that Titanosaurus is not officially a kaiju. His subtitle is even Kyoryu Kaiju, Dinosaur Monster. The distinction in the film is meant to show that he was a peaceful animal who became evil only after succumbing to the mind control of the mad Dr. Mathune. Left to his own devices, Titanosaurus lacks the destructive impulses of Godzilla and others in the series. Hence, he's not a monster in that sense of the word. That's Wikizilla's kaiju profile on Titanosaurus. The Mystery Bones of Infant Island, as named in a cast ornament figure released in 2012, more commonly known by its fan-made nickname Skeleturtle, is a small, skeleton-like turtle creature that appears briefly in Mothra vs. Godzilla in the background. Unlike other skeletal remains that never garner a lot of fan love, Skeleturtle is actually seen moving, suggesting he is a living creature. Skeleturtle has had an officially licensed t-shirt released of him, and also makes an appearance in the inner front and back covers of Shinji Nishikawa Drawing Book of Godzilla, in addition to his cast ornament and his official media appearances. Skeleturtle actually makes a physical appearance in Godzilla Rules of Earth number 19, where he is seen running away from Mothra and Batra's battle on Infant Island. Skeleturtle's inclusion in Mothra vs. Godzilla may be a reference to a popular 1962 Italian documentary entitled Mondo Cane. The film contains a large number of documented atrocities to nature and animals, including turtles on the radiation-contaminated Bikini Atoll beaches, many of which were dead or dying from the continued fallout from nuclear tests. The dried bones of the turtles move in the wind, which is reflected in Skeleturtle's movement in the film. That's all we have for the mystery bones of Infant Island. An irradiated Godzilla source, the Heisei Godzilla, also known as the third generation Godzilla, starts out being 80 meters tall in his debut film, The Return of Godzilla, through Godzilla vs. Biollante. After being incapacitated by the anti-nuclear energy bacteria, the Heisei Godzilla goes into hibernation for a period of two years, after which he feeds on a nuclear submarine, revitalizing him and causing him to grow in size to 100 meters. In this empowered state, the Heisei Godzilla is known as powered up third generation Godzilla, or alternatively, fourth generation Godzilla. In Godzilla vs. Destoroya, as a result of the explosion of Birth Island, Godzilla absorbs a large amount of radiation, turning the monster into Burning Godzilla. This iteration of the Monster King was portrayed by original Hedora and Gaigan suit actor Ken Pachiro Satsuma throughout all seven Heisei films, while Wataru Fukuda played the Godzilla Saurus. The Heisei King of the Monsters does not retain the heroic personality of the second Showa Godzilla, instead returning to the villainous persona of the original. However, while the original Godzilla appeared actively vengeful towards humanity, the Heiseiji is initially portrayed as a sympathetic and tragic being who is simply lost in human civilization and trying to survive, causing destruction as a consequence. Progressively, he began actively causing destruction and was portrayed as the primary villain in a couple of movies. In Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, the Big G began transitioning into an anti-hero character and raised an infant member of his species as his son. In the last two films of the Heisei series, Godzilla battled against monsters more malevolent than himself, while the character Miki Saigusa insisted that Godzilla was an intelligent being with human-like sentiments. Shown in Godzilla vs. Destoroya, where he displays visible grief and anger when his adopted son is killed by Destoroya. Atomic Breath 
The Heisei Monster King's distinctive weapon is a focused 500,000 degree Celsius beam of radiation released from his mouth, capable of causing large explosions and severely wounding monsters at point-blank range. Despite its power, some of the Big G's enemies have proven resistant to the standard atomic breath. Spiral Heat Ray A stronger variation of the standard atomic breath, this was an attack wrapped in an electrical spiral. Godzilla first used this beam to decapitate King Ghidorah's middle head after his regular atomic breath was shown having little effect on King Ghidorah. This first iteration of the spiral breath is still blue in color, but is surrounded by a purplish spiral of energy, and before Godzilla fires it, his dorsal plates are surrounded in blue electricity. As a result of Godzilla absorbing Fire Rodan's energy in Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, the color of this beam was changed to red, and it was so powerful that a few blasts of it were enough to destroy Super Mechagodzilla and Space Godzilla though Destroya was able to withstand several hits. The Big G fires a different red spiral ray in each film. First, the Uranium Atomic Heat Ray, peaking at 1.2 million degrees Celsius, then the Burn Spiral Heat Ray or Nuclear Fusion Heat Ray at around 900,000 degrees Celsius, and Burning Godzilla's two different beams, the Burning Heat Ray and the Infinite Heat Ray. The Infinite Heat Ray was utilized against Destroya once Burning Godzilla began to enter Meltdown, and is said to increase immeasurably in power each time Godzilla uses it. Nuclear Pulse The King of the Monsters can emit atomic energy in all directions from every inch of his body in a short-range pulse, first seen in his fight against Biollante, where he used it to break free from Biollante's tendrils. He also utilized his attack against King Ghidorah when the latter was attempting to strangle Godzilla with his necks. During his battle with Mothra, the Big G used a nuclear pulse to break free from the 3D mirror Mothra created with her scales. After being struck with Mechagodzilla's shock anchor harpoons, Goji discharged a form of energy up the cables, severely damaging the mech. Fighting Space Godzilla, Godzilla discharged energy through his physical blows, which overloaded the space monster with energy. After absorbing Fire Rodan's life force, Godzilla demonstrated the ability to give off huge amounts of radiation and heat so intense that it caused Super Mechagodzilla's synthetic diamond armor to literally melt, allowing the mech to be easily destroyed by Godzilla's spiral ray. In GV Destoroya, when Godzilla's body temperature begins to approach critical levels due to his meltdown, he constantly emits more powerful, orange-colored nuclear pulses which, while ineffective against the Super X-3, did stun Destoroya a few times and caused the area surrounding Godzilla to erupt in flames. In this case, the nuclear pulses appear to be uncontrollable and are a symptom of Godzilla's meltdown. Durability The Heisei Godzilla is extremely durable and resistant to conventional human weaponry, and his cells, G-cells, are a sought-after scientific commodity. In addition to being used to genetically engineer plants to be resistant to drought, G-cells give rise to the mutant creature Biolante who retains the Big G's durability and healing factor, and who also is said to be incapable of dying. In GV King Ghidorah, the radiation dose absorbed from a nuclear submarine allowed Godzilla to purge the anti-nuclear energy bacteria from his body, and after Fire Rodan imparted his energy into Godzilla, he was able to rapidly reform his destroyed second brain. Burning Godzilla had absorbed enough radiation from the Birth Island explosion that his power and regeneration were enhanced shown when Destoroya's horn katana left only external injuries despite slicing straight through his body. Godzilla also survived spending five years inside Mount Mihara, and falling into a volcanic fault and swimming through miles of molten, 1500 degree magma in GV Mothra. Physical Strength The Heisei Godzilla prefers to battle his opponents from a distance using his atomic breath rather than up close. When forced to battle an opponent up close, the Monster King still displayed vicious strength, shown when he lifted King Ghidorah by his tails and slammed it onto the ground repeatedly, and when he nearly strangled Rodan up close when the latter attempted to attack Godzilla while he was on the ground. He was also able to almost effortlessly lift Mechagodzilla by its head and throw it, despite its incredible mass. Amphibiousness Godzilla has an amphibious lifestyle, and is as adept a fighter underwater as he is on land. He engages opponents in the sea on multiple occasions, fighting Batra, Biollante, and Mothra either beneath or on the surface of the waves. Also, being submerged does not impede his atomic ray. Intelligence This Godzilla often reacts on animal cunning, shown through his conditioned response to the Super X's flares and Dr. Hayashida's magnetic wave transmitter, and through instinct, as he was said to use magnetic patterns in the atmosphere to navigate, like birds. He was still capable of independent thought, however, 
and according to Miki Saigusa of human-like sentiments as well, corroborated by his mourning the death of Godzilla Jr. In GB Space Godzilla, during the final battle, Godzilla was the first to figure out that Space Godzilla was drawing energy from the Fukuoka Tower and demolished the tower with the help of Lan Mogara. The Heisei Godzilla had some manner of psychic link with Godzilla Jr. He was also able to shrug off Miki Saigusa's attempts at psychic influence during a face-to-face -face encounter in GV Biollante, and even when she was aided by the technology of Project T in Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. Energy Absorption and Projection Because Godzilla's heart is a biological nuclear reactor, he relies on nuclear power to sustain his metabolism, and drives his sustenance from absorbing energy from active man-made nuclear reactors. In one case, the energy absorbed from a nuclear sub was enough to allow Godzilla's immune system to purge the Anna from his body and cause him to grow 20 meters in height. When Birth Island exploded, Godzilla absorbed a tremendous influx of radiation which made him substantially more powerful, though it eventually led to his meltdown. According to Kenichi Yamane, Godzilla's heart contained enough nuclear power to create, quote, a burst of energy unseen since time began, that would cause the Earth's atmosphere to ignite if it exploded. If Godzilla's meltdown was not kept under control by G-Force's freezer weapons, his heart would have melted down into the Earth's core and caused the planet to implode. Godzilla is also able to weaponize his own nuclear power in the form of his atomic breath or nuclear pulse, and constantly emits lethal amounts of radiation. In Godzilla vs. Asteroia, Godzilla attempts to revive his son by breathing energy into him, which manages to briefly stir Junior to life. When Godzilla melts down, he imparts his energy into Junior's corpse, reviving and mutating him into a fully grown Godzilla. Weaknesses The Monster King is shown to have a critical weakness to cadmium, an element commonly used to slow nuclear reactions. The Super X fired its full payload of cadmium missiles into the monster's mouth, temporarily stopping his heart and knocking him unconscious. It was also utilized by the Super X-3 to freeze burning Godzilla. In GVMG2, the Big G is revealed to have a second brain in his spine, and Super Mecha Godzilla paralyzed him from the waist down by destroying it. It was also suggested in GV Space Godzilla that Godzilla has a soft spot under each armpit, but this alleged weak point was never successfully exploited. The only other human-made weapon shown to be effective against Godzilla was Dr. Shiragami's anti-nuclear energy bacteria, Aneb, bacteria genetically engineered from G-cells designed to consume radioactivity. The Aneb managed to lower the radioactivity within Godzilla's body enough to force him into hibernation for two years. Godzilla also went through meltdown after the monster's internal reactor was unable to cope with the huge influx of radiation he absorbed from the Birth Island explosion. According to concept artist Shinji Nishikawa, Godzilla was originally written to be a Tyrannosaurus Rex prior to being mutated. Nishikawa, however, said he couldn't accept the idea that Godzilla was mutated from a Tyrannosaurus, so he came up with the idea for the Godzillasaurus and submitted concept art of it to Toho, ultimately leading to its inclusion in Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. It's common knowledge that a 4.8 meter tall Cybot Godzilla was constructed for the return of Godzilla. However, fewer people know that there were two different 84 Goji suits that were extremely similar in appearance. Similarly, Godzilla vs. Biollante had three suits. The second used for land scenes and the third for water scenes, while the first one made, called the No Good Suit, was deemed unacceptable and appeared only in publicity photos and for the scene when Godzilla approached the Twin 21 Towers, plus a mechanical upper half for Godzilla. For Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, the land suit, renamed Gidogoji, Shinjuku Battle, was given a new head and used to fight Mecha King Ghidorah and later in specific shots when it was cut in half. The 1989 sea suit was modified, renamed Gidogoji, Hokkaido Battle, and used for the majority of Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. And that's only scratching the surface of all the little tidbits regarding the Heisei suits. The Hokkaido battle suit has the distinction of being the only Godzilla suit to be stolen, news that made its way around the world. Well, Tri-State citizens, beware. Godzilla is on the loose. Unbelievably, someone has stolen the rubber Godzilla model from a Japanese special effects department in Tokyo. The model was made for a new Godzilla movie coming out in Japan. Now, the theft won't affect the film's premiere. I'm sure you're glad to hear that. I know. Jerry's relieved. But the 13-foot high-tech model is worth 39000 bucks, And the Japanese who have a real yen for their favorite movie star, they want him back. Has anyone checked with King Kong? The suit disappeared before Godzilla vs. Mothra began shooting, and was to have been used in several scenes too strenuous for the new Batogoji suit. Thankfully, it was eventually retrieved and used in the final movie. Created by Tomoyuki Tanaka, Ishiro Honda, Eiji Tsuburaya, and Akira Ifukube, 
The original Godzilla debuted in Toho's 1954 film Godzilla, which pioneered the kaiju genre. The original King of the Monsters stood 50 meters tall and weighed 20,000 metric tons. Godzilla's name is a mix of the Japanese Gorira, meaning gorilla, and Kujira, meaning whale. Despite his bones being plot points in future installments, the 1954 film distinctly shows Godzilla's bones being disintegrated by the oxygen destroyer. Originally, the sound effects team tried using many different animal roars for Godzilla. Unhappy with the results, Akira Ifukube created Godzilla's iconic roar by loosening the strings on a string base and rubbing the strings with a rosin-covered leather glove, and slowing down the resulting recording. This roar would later be altered for use as the roar of other monsters in the Showa era, including Varen, Baragon, and Gorosaurus. In the 2007 Toho drama film Always, Sunset on 3rd Street 2, a Godzilla design is seen destroying 1954 Tokyo in a dream sequence but because it does not have the same design of the original Godzilla, it's more of a reference to his film rather than the monster itself. Legendary Pictures has confirmed that their Godzilla stands 355 feet tall. His tail is 550 feet and 4 inches long. There are exactly 89 dorsal blades running down his back. The palm of his hands are 34 feet and 4 inches each and that his roar can be heard from three miles away. Eric Adal and Ethan Van Der Rin, sound designers of the 2014 film, embarked on a similar process of experimentation to the 1954 Godzilla films. To make the legendary Godzilla's roar, they first tried animal sounds and reproduced the glove-on strings used to create the original Godzilla roar, but were not happy with the results. They spent six months over a three-year period trying to create a roar that would fit the new Godzilla. Using scientific microphones that record above the range of human hearing and then taking the ultrasonic sounds and pitching them down and slowing them down. That's how the Legendary Godzilla's War was made. The Legendary Godzilla was not portrayed exclusively through computer animation. Some motion capture work was performed by TJ Storm and Andy Serkis, who motion captured the 2005 King Kong, provided consultation about making Godzilla and the Muto's computer-generated movements more realistic. Until the release of Shin Godzilla in 2016, the legendary Godzilla was the tallest incarnation of Godzilla to appear in a movie, surpassing the previous record set by the late Hasty Godzilla by a bit over 8 meters. Well, that's all there is to say about Godzilla 2014, for now. Varen debuted in Ishiro Honda's Varen, where he lived in a mountain lake in Japan's Yamanaka region, is worshipped as the god Baradagi. Varen weighs 15,000 metric tons and stands at 50 meters, the same height as the original Godzilla. In the 1997 novel Godzilla 2000 by Mark Saracini, Varen's gliding capabilities are credited to sacks of helium in his skin. Varen was originally going to play a larger part in Destroyer Monsters, but because his suit had become so deteriorated, only a small, immobile puppet could appear in the film. Varen was in one of the original drafts for GMK, and was intended to act alongside Anguirus and Baragon as the nature gods that Godzilla fought in the film. That was Wikizilla's kaiju profile on Varen. The 2016 Godzilla makes his debut in Hideaki Anno's Godzilla Resurgence, also known as Shin Godzilla, where he starts off as an aquatic creature only whose tail is seen. He then adapts to be able to walk on land in his 28 meter tall second form. As time goes on, he grows visibly redder in a segue to the third form, which stands twice as tall at 57 meters. After is his fourth form, where he becomes the tallest Godzilla in film to date, standing at 118.5 meters. He's still shorter than the Hanna-Barbera Godzilla. In place of violets, this form has silvery nictating membranes that cover its eyes and protect them from harm. Godzilla's tail is red and bloody and covered in twisted mangled bones, with a malformed skeletal face at the end. According to the characters in the film, Godzilla is the most evolved creature on the planet, possessing eight times the genetic information of human beings. Godzilla started out as a type of prehistoric sea creature that adapted to feed on nuclear waste in its habitat, then continued growing and evolving over a period of 60 years. Godzilla's first and second forms never roar in Godzilla resurgence, but the third and fourth forms do. 
The third form utilizes Godzilla's roars from the original 1954 film. While his fourth form primarily uses Godzilla's roars from King Kong vs. Godzilla through Terror of Mechagodzilla in the Showa series. Just before being frozen at the film's climax, Godzilla's fourth form emits a roar from the return of Godzilla. This Godzilla's first appearance wasn't actually in Godzilla Resurgence. Instead, it first appeared in the anime short Crayon Shin-chan vs. Shin Godzilla. Of course, Godzilla Resurgence was in development way before this episode, but it's fun to note anyways. While Shin Godzilla isn't the first Godzilla, or even the first Japanese Godzilla, to be portrayed using computer-generated imagery in part, it is the first Japanese Godzilla to be portrayed predominantly through CGI. There was no suit in the traditional sense of Shin Goji, instead some simple head and tail parts for motion capture, and a giant three-man puppet that went largely unused. Godzilla's second, third, and fourth forms have received nicknames based on what parts of Japan they landed or first appeared in. The second form has been nicknamed Kamata-kun, after Kamata, Tokyo. The third form has been dubbed Shinagawa-kun, after Shinagawa Ward. And the fourth form's nickname is Kamakura-san, from Kamakura City. Kamata-kun has become massively popular among Godzilla fans, and has become a meme throughout the fanbase due to his cute appearance, even managing to be trending on the meme website Know Your Meme for a little while. Way to go, Kamata-kun! Anyway, that was Wikizilla's profile on the 2016 Godzilla. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.